According to most Democrats, half of Twitter, and all of his family, any picture of him is a dick pic. Adam Carolla. Yeah! So true. Get it on. Got to get it on. No choice. We're going to mandate you get it on. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for telling the friends. Uh, the ratings go up last week. Good day, Gina Grad. Good day to you. And Bald Brian. Oopsie. All right. So we'll talk to uh, Joe about uh, what we can do to straighten out this uh, city. I'll also play you some uh, great tape from a, just a few hours ago, I think, where uh, he was given, well, it went up uh, like 17 hours ago where he was given a speech and or they were trying to. And of course, the hecklers in the crowd, mm. they don't like cops. Right. They, they, the, the, the the un currently housed or whatever euphemistic thing we're calling homeless people these days. In between domiciles. Just, uh, yeah, just just going hard on him. Also, uh, Bill Maher will play you some of his real time. Uh, I'm going to go see Bill Maher directly after this. Uh-oh. So, uh, he's known he's, to not be a fan. Does he know? <laughs> Well, he doesn't like Kyle Dunnigan. Oh, right. I'm okay. not sure what he thinks about me. That was just a nod to Kyle. Yeah, I always, uh, I, I see Bill uh, from time to time, and we're usually pretty friendly. He always has that, uh, how are the kids? And I'm like, uh, they're good. <laughs> Re- but really. Really. What's but really. Like? It's, and, uh, kids to him are like someone telling me they like Vegemite or Poi. Right. I'm like, but, but. You wince. But come on. Yeah. We got smoked, really we got like? smoked turkey, yeah. right? And he's like. I like it. You know, yeah. I like my kids. What, are you, what am I going to say? What capacity are you seeing him in? Business, personal? Oh, he's doing his own. So, and I don't know if it's connected, but I, w- I would kind of suspect uh, all speculation. But remember those times, and we played it here on the show because we're, we're kindred spirits where he was talking about building his solar shack. Yeah. And, the city, you know, it t- took him two years to, to do ass. it. It's such a fucking pain in the ass. I've said 100,000 times, uh, yeah, okay, you like the government here in California, but you're living in a rent-controlled apartment in Santa Monica. Go buy a piece of property and try to build something right. on it and then get back to me and tell me how you like the government right. because there's just... It, there's something at, at the core of an American when you're going like, I bought this property, I pay a bunch of taxes on this property, I would like to do something on my property, and you got some guy just going, no, or we'll think about it, or maybe, or maybe in six months. But I bought it. It's right. mine. Feel. No, it is not yours. It is not yours to do with what you please. I actually did laugh out loud when we looked at one house and had a big backyard, and the guy goes, you could even put in a pool, and I started laughing, yeah, thinking of what that would no, take. 175 grand <laughs> right. and nine years later. I, th- I think about things you say on the air when I'm off the air and uh, some things you know, <laughs> stick and, and, and they, they float and they ruminate and you bemoaned for many years I don't know what specifically but generally how, how nice it would be to have a spouse who was an AV expert Mm-hmm. And then that's something you want in a spouse. I'm like, yeah, it's fine. Like, you know, it'd be funny to have or fun or helpful to have, you know, the spouse is an expert in this or that or the thing they could just take care of uh, without having to outsource or find someone. And you remind me because our neighbor, a good neighbor to have, city inspector. Oh. We have a neighbor, a city inspector, and he's over our house. This is two or three years ago when we saw people over our house. And uh, it was, uh, he's looking at our, our outdoor uh, redo and he's like, it's in permit, is it? I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, no. He's like, I'm not going to say anything. Uh-huh. Christy Thanks. needs to show up with those cookies with the salt on top. Yes, that's what we do. Yeah, yeah from a theme, and then I'll circle back to Bill. <laughs> um, you know, like my son is kind of tech savvy now, and um, you know, was making fun of me the other day as being the only person who listens to the radio anymore mm. and stuff like that. And when you can call somebody in your room and go, "I'm looking at this." link they oh. sent me on my phone but i want to see it on my on totally. my tv it's like but 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 let's expand that like the roles the traditional roles you know what i mean like you who i'm married to uh you take care of x y and z around here i'll patch the roof like it's it is so nice to have that diversity in abilities mm-hmm. now there's some people like 
some of my family members who they don't know jack shit about anything and they're nothing in which case they have no practical application in, in our lives but if they have some money then they could co-sign oh, yeah. for the loan of the condo yeah, or whatever. Sure. Now, my family yeah. is fucking zilch and bust in both, right. which fucking <laughs> sucks. But if your dad yeah. runs a transmission place, then he can fix your car. Right. And it, it's just nice having oh. having somebody with some wow. ability and a little can-do spirit yes. that will just take care of things while well, you then take care of other things. The father-in-law with all the tools. Oh, oh, with boy. all the tools. I don't even know what these are for. <laughs> I wouldn't consider Andy and I the most traditional couple, but uh, m- almost on a daily basis, certainly a weekly, I got the pork tenderloin uh, doing its thing in the slow cooker. Can you please set up my audio session and build me that cabinet? No problem. That's good I show. love it. It It is. At, look, even on a, on a more granular level, uh, at the other shop, Sean is a great welder fabricator. I'm the woodworking sort of residential home guy. Get me to swing your the door. Get him to fab up the stainless steel hand railing. It's, it, it's nice. It's it's nice. I I don't know. Uh, first off, I don't know why it's become so acceptable for people just to have zero expertise in anything. Like you, what's your skill set? I love coffee. Get the, f- get the fuck out of here. Can you do something? It's a joke. It's, I don't want to do that. That's adulting. Yeah, adulting. I don't want to adult so today. that to me the other day. That's I'm a like, thing. I'm 40, I know what I am. 43-year-old man. I don't need to <laughs> learn how to adult. All right. Sorry, so, real quick. You know what's worse mm. is uh, when you are not an expert, but you're the de facto expert. Yeah. Like to my in-laws, I'm the AV guy. And, and then it always ends up, with, why is it? Wor- I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. I'll get sunny over there. I did my best. So uh, Mar is, so Mar's one of these guys, I've been to his house before, where I think this is the case. He went, Seth MacFarlane did this. <laughs> Jimmy Kimmel did this. Many, many celebrities do this. You get a home and you like your home. And when you get your home, you're making, you know, $5 million a year. But at some point you're making $28 million a year. And you go, well, maybe you should move into a different home, a bigger home, a nicer home. And they go, I like it here, but I would like a half yes. court basketball hoop, mm-hmm. and then the house next door comes up for sale, yes, yes, and then you yes. buy that one. I mean, Seth MacFarlane may have bought half the mountaintop. He, you know, so it's a compound. I would go to, when I would go to his house back in the day. He just had a house, a nice house, but nothing, nothing special with a nice view just uh, on top of the hills in Hollywood. And at a certain point. The amphitheater and the literal underground IMAX theater, like a IMAX theater. Underground? Under- yes. Yes. And the underground well, where put bar. It? And it <laughs> just, on. it just. Dome it like It uh, just kept light. going. So I think Bill did the, bought the neighbor house expansion. And. Is this Malibu? No. Oh, okay. He's in, some reason. Hills? He's more in the hills. Okay. Like Hollywood Hills. Or sort of Beverly Hills, Hollywood Hills. And then he now was talking about the solar shack on the show the whole time. But he was also building another sort of studio, freestanding mm, something. ADU. I haven't been there yet. But the whole... <laughs> uh, yeah. Mother-in-law suite. <laughs> A bar, essentially. And so now he wants to do this thing where people he wants to talk to come in, sit down in a... Sort of a playboy after dark Ooh, theme nice. and uh, have a drink or a toke or whatever it is everyone wants to do and then sits down in this sort of casual environment and nice. has a conversation, not like necessarily it. like a political thing, just sort of a life, out, life yeah. thing, sort of hanging out thing. So that's good and good on him. And uh, but I keep I kept wondering if when he was talking about the city and the permits and everything, he wasn't talking about that place mm-hmm. versus the the shack. Although there's no doubt, so 
solar's a shit show. I mean, it, it's 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 a perfect metaphor for California and Los Angeles, which is we want everyone to get this thing, but we still regulate the shit out of everything and make it everything hard on everybody. So maybe you'll get solar, but probably not because it's going to be too overregulated. The and benefits it's, it's minus the hassle cost, right. whatever it is, it's, right. it's, it's, you're at a net loss. So... Um, <laughs> I will play you a, a clip because uh, Mars just fucking going guns a blazing at Good. everything that we uh, pretended to, everything <laughs> we thought he was. He he is not. Some of the uh, liberal pundits I follow on Twitter are uh, they feel betrayed. Oh yes, well not he has turned his back. <laughs> not Good only sir. that, it's funny when you watch this clip. He's digging into China and he's digging into our hypocrisy and he's, you know, he's going after LeBron James mm. and it's called like he sees it. Mm. He's calling it. And I would argue more. He's calling it as it is like, you know, we all remember a couple of years ago when the guy from the not Houston Rockets. Oh, the coach. But, yeah. yeah. The, the, uh, Daryl Morey. Yeah. He said, oh, the that, owner. You know, right? liberate Taiwan or whatever it was. Hong Kong. Hong Kong or Taiwan was later on with John Cena, but he, he came out with the Hong Kong thing. And then LeBron's like, he needs to be educated. <laughs> well, he's selling sneakers. Right. I, I mean, <laughs> it, it's it's pretty transparent. But he's, most of people in Hollywood kind of go, well, we know what's going on, but that's the game. Yeah. And uh, yeah. just kind of keep it quiet because you have to n- navigate, negotiate these right. waters. And uh, you want them to watch the All-Star. Maybe yeah. I would like LeBron James to come on as a guest. So maybe I should oh. keep it zipped. But um, Bill's got, again, not F you money. He's got F me money. And he's letting it fly. And and it's funny when you listen to the audience reaction because they're like, but I thought you this were. This is normally over <laughs> clap. A smattering of clapping. <laughs> well, what he is, as I've said uh, many times, um, liberal, great, leftist, bad. He is a liberal. He's always been a liberal, but he's not left. Yeah. Left is where all the defund the police right. and all the shit ideas come from. Liberals are consistent. They want to smoke pot. They want to have sex with who they want. And they also would like the government to stop uh, over-regulating everything. That's Fair. a consistent thing. So we'll listen to the clip. He's- yeah. So this is this is from Friday. And the whole thing is just about kowtowing to China and America kowtowing. And he gives those examples of John Cena uh, apologizing in Mandarin, Daryl Morey in the NBA, the Top Gun flag. And then he also references Eileen Gu, the freestyle skier who uh, is American but – or do, was American, but uh, decided. Do to, we have uh, seen on this clip? No. Oh, okay. Well, that was the best one, Chris. Well, oh. Okay. Do we have the flag one? No, I, I didn't include any of the examples. I included his thoughts. Like, his, oh, okay. His well, statement. get Cena anyway, because that's pretty that's fucking awesome. sure. pretty fucking good. But here we go. Now we do have human rights issues right here at home. We do, but we're still at least for another three years. A, <laughs> A democracy based on freedom. And they are an authoritarian surveillance state based on how would you like to disappear for a few months? <laughs> like that uh, tennis player who recently vanished for a while when she said she'd been raped by a government official. We do still throw too many black people in jail. But perspective matters. China has basically jailed an entire ethnic minority. The Uyghurs, a situation that both the Trump and Biden administrations has called a genocide. America is not close to that. And it's a cynical dodge to pretend that China's sins should be overlooked because we all do it. Mm -hmm. No. Some of Gu's defenders say it's racist to ask if she's still an American citizen, and she herself won't say. Why is that racist? Why was it racist to think that COVID might have originated from a lab leak as opposed to from eating bats? Besides the fact that the idea that COVID came from eating gross, weird food seems way more racist than the idea that it came from a high-tech lab. That's a really good point. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Besides that, the definition of woke was supposed to be being alert to injustice in society. But because the woke now see race first and everything else never, Hmm. fear of being accused of racism has given a free pass on human rights abuses to China and any other places that are perceived as non-white. 
Didn't Martha Luther King say, an injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere? Uh, okay, okay. He's yeah. safe to clap there. In, in 2020, NBA players wore jerseys that said freedom, speak up, and justice. But I guess those things only matter for home games. <laughs> Sorry, Uyghurs. Mm. Someone has to tell me where we got this rule that you can't criticize China because I suspect we got it from China. Because <laughs> after all, it's where we get everything else. Well said. All right, you can find the Cena thing. Well um, yeah, we'll have it ready in there. He did, it's funny, and you can, there's that part where he goes, woke doesn't, it now just means everything about race and you hear like the audience silent and the one woman kind of goes <laughs> like oh fuck that's what I've been doing for the last decade yeah they're not sure what to do yeah. with him now because he's talking about shit that's abundantly true but it's been flying in the yeah. like the, the origins of COVID we were told you can't talk about that and as Brian kind of pointed out boy was he right on about racism uh, with bats versus a high tech yeah. lab so, that so, so, never they're, they're either evil and nefarious or they're savages who can't control their weirdness yes. right yeah, that one never really sat right with me because I'm like well why is that one racist talking about eating something yucky and gross and not our culture well in we my right. savage. in my um, assessment of this moment and I always say sort of follow the theme mm -hmm. and I've always said you know you should be agnostic but when I hear like ivermectin definitely doesn't work even though I just heard of ivermectin 10 minutes ago like what are you, what are you so right. I have very strong thoughts yeah, yeah. very strong thoughts <laughs> alright along those themes it was uh, hey maybe the virus came from the lab in Wuhan no way. How dare you? You're taken off the internet. Like, everyone should have been completely agnostic. They should have just went, uh, well, there's a lab and yeah. it studies viruses. And what are the logical Wuhan? thread that, like, yeah, there's a lab that right. studies so viruses and this is worse. Why started. are we being shut down and told to shut up for logical thoughts? And then you step back and go, well, there's a theme. And the theme isn't all the information right. that's fit to print. It's here's what you do and here's what you don't do. And then, like I said, it's my... Uh, you know, the cop going, hey, can I check the trunk of your car? No, you cannot. It's like, oh. Excuse you. Well, maybe there's something in there. Yeah. That's yeah. the way I always felt about the lab leak theory. Right. And that's what he said. Maybe it came from China. It came. It, everything else comes from China. If you're a Chinese government official, it's much easier to say, I don't know, there's wet markets. We don't know anything about those, as opposed to this is something we fund. Well, also... We're at some point where, like, well, China said it didn't come from the lab. When when we go with China <laughs> right. said? Well, if he said so. On on anything. All right, are we playing the uh, Cena clip? Yeah. Here, here we go. This is the best you see, one. He John referred to Taiwan as a country, as if it was a separate country from China, which it is. But China would like to do to Taiwan what it did to Tibet, and what it's now doing to Hong Kong. So we were treated to this video. Very, very, very important. I love and respect China and the Chinese people. I'm very, very sorry about my mistake. I got tennis blared. I mean, it is an impressive example. And I thought steroids shrunk your balls. <laughs> wow. That was on fire. Wow. Yeah. All right. Spitting some truth. <laughs> Wowee. When a country can make your big, muscly, macho man action stars grovel in their language, you know you're somebody's bitch. Well, damn. <laughs> Come on, Max Zapata. That was the best clip of the fucking thing. I, I agree, but uh, okay. <laughs> you, did, right. you weren't very clear. I asked you specifically, what do you want? If you would have said Cena, I said, I go cut. Pat. No. I said, well, first off, I rely on you oh, boy. To, to, be discer to be a discerning eye of what's good in a, in a clip. You okay. know what I'm saying? Number two, I said, just go past the tennis part. And after that, it's... You said go past the freestyle skier part. Oh, oh, sorry. Which you're was, right. You're that, right. Go the past the freestyle. Which is 40 seconds of a right. nine-minute video. Right. So but I... To... Okay. Pardon me. I thought you would see the Cena thing and go, that's pretty fucking cool. That's all. Okay. That's all. I don't... Uh, 
and I don't remember everything that's in it, so I just I think rely we're all on you to, to take uh, take a look at uh, what you think's good. You right. had the good stuff, but Cena was, yeah, pretty fucking killer. The closer. Yeah, that was the closer. <laughs> all right, so uh, he's speaking his mind. Good for him. I don't know. Oh, can we can we find that clip of uh, when he's talking about uh, woke and the audience like <laughs> well, knowing what to that do with Bill it? Bill was like one of the original canceled guys, right, for the nine eleven comments, mm-hmm. and it was oh my Swift. God, yeah, and mm-hmm. it was it was Swift, and it was effective. For God, and I wonder if he's entered that Charles Barkley, ter- Adam Carolla territory, <laughs> where mm-hmm. he can't be canceled now. Yeah, uh, like I hate it. What would he have to say to get canceled? They, at this point, he's just speaking his mind. People he's are on board all. one way or the other. Yeah. Like, well, that's just Bill. You know, look, he's never been divorced. He doesn't have any kids. He's been working nonstop for 30 years. He's, he's, his net worth it, must it, be $50 million. He's got to have a ton of dough and he can always go out and play dates and right. make tons of dough going out and playing dates. So there's really nothing we can do to him in terms of canceling. You should moderate a presidential debate. Oh my I, God, I that would be amazing. That. I would love that. All right, uh, sorry, we'll play that audio. Besides that, the definition of woke was supposed to be being alert to injustice in society. But because the woke now see race first and everything else never, Fear of being accused of racism has given a free pass on human rights abuses to China and any other places that are perceived as non-white. If China was in Europe, would they get away with having concentration camps without more of an outcry from America? If men were forcing women to wear this in, say, Massachusetts, would that go as unremarked on as it does? All right. So, uh, yeah, another, it was all good. Um... We'll give him our best. Yeah. Yeah, I'll give him your best. I'll see. I don't know how stoned he's going to get. Could get really stoned. Be great. Yeah. I think he can handle it. He's a he's an old salt he's at a that. Pro. Yeah. I uh, know. I know. I'm, I'm going all the way back 20 years when we we're doing that. I swear to God, I think we we're doing a benefit at the uh, improv for Ariana Huffington's animal research rescue. I did not see it going this direction. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Well, How he's, does he know what he was doing? Then? He's big into animals. I love it. He, not so much kids, miniature or people. kids. <laughs> Good. The, the people, but he likes great. the animals. That's great. I think Ariana Huffington had a big thing with that. And um, we were playing. I've told, I haven't told the story in a million years, but we're, we're sitting there at the Hollywood Improv. We're just sitting in the back, sort of in the comedian's corral. I wasn't a stand-up really at the time. I was doing Love Line and stuff, and 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 we were going to go out and do Love Line, right? And he was going to play the role of Doctor Drew, and I was going to be me, and we we're going to do this. And I, I was sitting there, and I was watching all these really good journeyman comedians, Honed. yeah, tight. guys like Kevin Nealon doing like a tight eight minutes, 10 minutes, you know, Pat Oswalt will go go tight 10. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, these guys are cooking. And they're not up there going, does anyone have a question (laughs) about what I'm wearing? Where are you from? (laughs) Yeah. It was like, they were rat-a-tat-tat with the jokes one after the other. And about five guys in, I was like, we're just going to walk up there and like look around and Wing it. try to explain stuff. And it's, it, we'll be out of rhythm with this really tight comedy show. So I said, uh, Bill, don't, shouldn't we talk about what we want to do? Like you're playing Dr. Drew, but are we going to take questions? And he goes, let's go outside and figure it out. Yeah. And I said, oh, okay. And we went outside the club on Melrose and he started walking down the street. And I was kind of like, oh, where are we going? And he's like, oh, we're talking. And then we'd stop on the corner. He blows a joint. And then he goes, all right. And we go back in. <laughs> Done. I'm like, okay, so <laughs> break. We've, we've worked none of this out, but now I know you're baked. <laughs> he went to Red O, got a taco, came back. This is going to be awesome. So what? do you remember it? Uh, oh, it was a highlight of his career. I was going to say, is it traumatic? I remember it starting off a little slow mm-hmm. and bumpy as I kind of thought it would, and then us kind of getting in to a rhythm nice. and it uh, it working out. What if he calls you a pussy because you won't smoke any weed today? <clears throat> well, uh, they ask when you, Rome, they ask you what that. your uh, weapon of ah. choice is, so I told him, pour me a highball. Nice. If you want to get right. my panties off. Good. Um, 
All right, good news in the uh, automotive uh, racing world. Uh, I am very close to getting a ride, another ride in a professional Trans Am car, which is coming up mid or later April at the uh, Laguna Seca here. So oh. decipher what that means, one of your cars or one of their cars? Getting a ride in a professional Trans Am team's okay. car. So they will show up with their 18 wheelers and their techs and their pit guys and their crazy 900 horsepower. This is a Camaro actually tube frame, big slicks, like big, fast, right. crazy car. And that's the way to do it. You just show up on your own. Yeah. They basically have trans Chris, your weddings pushed. <laughs> <laughs> they have trans am one trans am two and trans am three. This is trans am one. This is the biggest and the fastest. And it will be fucking killer. I have I have some idea of what to expect because I've already done one of these races. Forgive my ignorance. Is this a ride along situation, or are you gonna be driving the car? In the car for the race. No, no. Again, you're gonna be driving the car. or You're gonna be riding along for the race. No, no, you can't. There's no ride along for the race. Uh, I, it's like hollowed out. That's why it's taking your yeah. question. Yeah, where that was really horrible. <laughs> yeah, they don't. There's no passenger seat or anything. I, now they will on on rare occasion. They'll throw a passenger seat in a race car just to, uh, you know, on press day right. or something, but never in a race okay. uh, unless. It's a rally race. That's where you what I have, was thinking. That's where I was going. With you this. have a navigator ah. who's actually looking at a map. But and famously, <laughs> when uh, Paul Newman got to, I'll screw up the track, some big track like Road Atlanta or someplace like that, but Watkins Glen or something. Um, he was in a, like a three man endurance race with the Porsche 935 that he raced at uh, Le Mans, and he was his lap times were considerably slower than the other two guys that were driving the car. Uh, Bobby Rahal, I think, was one of them. Uh, at some point, somebody put him in the car as a passenger, but there's no passenger seat. He sat on a milk crate Ew. and, like, hung on to the wow. roll bar. Death rich, proof. <laughs> rich man, poor man, what I used to do in my dad's uh, service van. Right. Yeah. He had no no belts, no nothing. He just sat yeah. there while... Um, I'll, I'll think of the guy's name, but um, took him on, you know, handful of hot laps, showed him the line, basically, Rolf Stumlin, who died in a 935 a year oh. later at Riverside, but put him in there, showed him the line, and Paul came back and trimmed three seconds a lap uh -huh. off and, and whatever. But anyway, a uh, big car, I don't know, you can find a picture of a TR1 uh Camaro. Now, don't get Trans Am twisted with Burt Reynolds. It's it's the Trans Am series. There will be Corvettes. There will be some Camaros. There will be some Mustangs. Mm -hmm. But they're all purpose-built, cage, tube frame. They, they didn't start off life as a car. Right. They started as a bunch of tubes that got welded together and triangulated. Mad Max. And then they put crazy slicks on it and crazy. And, it, and it's fast. It, it's going to be... You know, the lap times are going to be 15, 10, 15 seconds faster lap than what I'm used to in, in vintage, which, but that may not sound like a lot. It, no, it, it does. It's night and day. <laughs> it does. It, it is, it is, you're going so much fucking faster in these cars. Now, this is not an indictment on your driving, but I am wondering when it comes to driving someone else's car, they insure those, right? Like you're not going to feel super bad if something happens. They wouldn't be they insured. Super bad. They wouldn't be insured on the track. Wow, that that much I know. <laughs> That's good. How could you drive it like you stole it? Well, could you imagine how much it would cost to insure a race car on a track with all that goes on on a on a track? But then you're just rolling yeah, the dice. I imagine it's that way in the vintage world. They just you can insure them while they're sitting in your right. shop and towing them, but you can't wow. can't do anything Ooh, with them. Why is it a flame? <laughs> I'm guessing because the guy's downshifting, but uh, that's crazy. It is a it is a crazy fast car. I mm -hmm. mean, the you know it's 900 horsepower and like 2,700 pounds, which is it's all about horsepower to weight ratio. And this one's fucking nuts. That's awesome. So it'll it'll be fun. It'll be hairy. It'll be a definite experience, but it'll uh, definitely be a challenge. But 
I raced one of these cars already, so I have some jumping off point. I have some familiarity. It's very low to the ground. It's low. It's in the inside. It's just a full cage. It's just, um, it, Chris, we have me at Willow. You can you can see what the inside of the car looks like. Are the headlights functional? No, they're yeah. taped. That makes sense. They're decal because they would weigh something. Of course. In case so someone's they, in they, your they, way, you they, blink them a little. That's right. You get a little high beam. <laughs> but if you're doing uh, endurance racing like Le Mans, you would have functional right, headlights right, so night. because it turns into it turns into night. All right. So I'll let you find that, cool. Chris. I'll tell you about. Um, you'll tell us when Joe shows up. Uh, yeah, Max Pan. Yeah, he's here. He just got here. Okay, put the sign up when okay. it gets here. Yeah, okay. All right. Patterns, 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 people. Got to stick with those patterns. All right, so uh, Joe's here. So there's things I want to get into with him. Should we, uh, Should we? I don't know, we'll play a little Trans Am clip, but we'll play you. Um, should we play him getting shouted down or do we want to do oh, that yes. when he's uh, in here? When he's here, he wanted to talk about it. He sent me a clip too. Okay, so wow. he's. Guys, producing. He's got it. <laughs> Uh, all right, little Trans Am. I'll I'll do a spot, and you can find what the inside of that car looks yeah, like. Yeah, we got it. We, we'll put it, we'll put it up after your, your spot. All right, let's see. Let me find my spot here. Oh, oh my, I can't tell my papers. Oh, Not stuck. Things here. I got yeah. it. Yeah. All right, let me tell you about uh, Start Mail. There you go. Free email like Gmail and Yahoo. Are, well, they're not really free. You pay with your privacy. Big tech exploits your data by selling it to the highest bidder. That's right. It's a lot of surveillance going on. It's funny. When I used to talk about all this, China's watching and Russia, I'd be like, oh, please. Tinfoil hat. Um, hmm. Start mail. Keeps uh, email private, period. Every email can be encrypted, even if the recipient doesn't use encryption. And when you delete an email at Startmail, it's gone forever. Startmail uses their own servers, not Amazon's. Switching is seamless. Easily transfer all your current email data and protect yourself with unlimited anonymous aliases. Backed by the most stringent privacy laws in the world, it's Startmail, right, Dawson? Start securing your email privacy with Startmail. Sign up today and you get 50% off your first year. Go to startmail.com slash A-C-E-S. That's Startmail. Start with a T, S-T-A-R-T, mail.com slash A-C-S. For 50% off your first year, startmail.com slash A-C-S. Here's uh, 10 seconds of what that car is. The same... It's probably the same car with a different different body on it. It's bending time and space. Yeah, well the, the <laughs> GoPro's got a little squirrely at a certain certain speed. Even the GoPro got nervous. <laughs> It's it's a fucking beast, and this time I'm gonna have a, a real radio in my helmet so I can hear what these guys are saying. Although you can't once you get back onto the when, once you get back on the gas, you can't hear anything. But it is awesome. I'm fucking pumped, and I love Laguna Seca. That's awesome, and it's a track I know, but uh, that doesn't mean it's gonna. Doesn't mean we're going to have a favorable outcome. The inside of the car looks like some robotics fourth grade class putting a robot together. It's just wires everywhere. Yeah. And it is interesting in life how there are little, little teachable moments and learnable things. Like last time I showed up and they're like, you got a radio in your helmet? I'm like, no, I do not. Oh, well, that's a shame. Anyway. <laughs> and I was like... <laughs> Could have been put in the form of an email two weeks ago. But uh, okay. But now, so it's funny how the human mind works. I'm like, radio, helmet, helmet, radio. The other the other thing was is uh, the dash just has one computer screen about the size of this little cheat screen I have here. And it's got different settings on it. And I did a whole practice session with nothing on, no, no good information on the screen, like, RPMs or what gear I was in or speed or things that you want. And then uh, 
I came back in. I was like, I, there's nothing on the screen. I don't know how fast I'm going. I don't know what gear I'm in, blah, blah, blah. And he goes, the guy goes, I do love, this is my favorite answer of all time. The guys, you know, they come out with an 18 wheeler, they put the awning out, they put the car up. There's a, there's a beehive of activity around the car that was checking tire temps and mm. dialing and stuff and checking oil temps and stuff like that. And the guy goes, oh, I go, there's nothing on the screen. He goes, you had the screen in pit mode. Oh. I was like, first oh. off, I don't know How what dare you. I didn't <laughs> touch the screen. <laughs> you guys put it in pit mode when you checked it in between yes. sessions, and then you yes. left it in pit mode. You, you had it in. It's very yeah. Uh, convenient. Uh, yeah. yeah, I didn't have it in anything yeah. because I'm scared to touch <laughs> anything in this car except for the steering wheel and the gear shifter. That's all I'm going to touch. I'm not messing with <laughs> no any breaks. of these buttons or hey, no brakes, no clutch. What does this do? No, not, probably it's an ejector seat. So I'm doing <laughs> nothing. Bond so, but I do love the answer. Oh, you had it. Yeah, you, you had, had it. it. Yeah, I had it. No, That's good. You put it in pit mode, then you push me out on the track, and you didn't put it back into track mode. You. Yeah. You had it. Well, maybe you just go one had it in pit mode. <laughs> it, but was it was in. in. <laughs> this is the new world order of answers. You know, <laughs> you had it in pit mode. But now I'm like, okay, I'm going to ask this time, like, make sure it's not in pit do mode. Do I have there. it in pit <laughs> mode? <laughs> All right, Joe Buscaino is coming in here. He's running for mayor, and he's got thoughts, and we'll talk to him right after this. And now, Alcoa presents Definitely Not a Jew on the Adam Carolla Show. Dateline, Detroit, Michigan. After complaining about slow service, a 35-year-old woman in a wheelchair shot at a McDonald's employee with a taser. Definitely not a Jew. Joe Buscaino back on the show, 15-year veteran of the uh, LAPD and now running for mayor of Los Angeles since Garcetti's going off to India in like September. When does that, when does he leave? Sooner than later, I believe we're looking at within the next uh, 30 days or 45 days. The U.S. Senate still has to confirm him uh, and then off to India. My challenge for Garcetti would be this. Let's say... You leave in September for India. I would bet you if we just elected no mayor Mm. and just left Los Angeles the fuck alone, (laughs) it would actually be better run than under your custodianship. But uh, you want to be the next mayor of Los Angeles. We just got to restore some sensibility and balance to the city. We have seen a bunch of chaos, craziness, and a city that has welcomed you know, uh, um, folks from across the country to come to Los Angeles, zero consequences, pitch mm-hmm. a tent, shoot up drugs, uh, light fires, and not be held accountable. Well, that's that's the other thing. There's this, uh, When it comes to the homelessness thing, yep. I mean, we're – look, they're taking fentanyl and we're taking crazy pills because <laughs> we are more – arguably nuttier than they are, the city council, in terms of our assessment of what's going on. Yep. You know, the face of homelessness is a mother of three who's out of work. Everybody's a crazed, bearded junkie. Everybody I've ever seen. Otherwise, they would do the sofa surf, the couch surf. It, it's, just, it's a really simple yeah. equation. You don't need to have a rich family, and you don't need to have a family. So, oh, I'll stay, in the, uh, I'll stay down in the cabana by the tennis court. No, when you're normal and you're not a junkie and you don't have deep psychiatric problems— Then you have relationships and people you went to high school with and family members and stuff like that. And then when you're canned from your job and the shit goes down and the price of gas is six bucks a gallon, you crash on somebody's sofa because you have a relationship with that person. So I would say, you know, they'll go like what percent? I think from my observations, we're at zero percent of people sleeping on the sidewalk who don't have serious psychiatric illness and or 
uh, addiction problems. Why I'm running for mayor. Uh, my colleagues have not agreed with me how to tackle this issue and lead with urgency on it. I'm, I've proven how to handle homelessness. Half of the people sleep on the sidewalks in my district are now um, in safer locations, but we've also cleaned our streets. Um, and um, this is why I have a, I'm going to the ballot. If you your listeners go to Safer Streets at LA, we're going to end street camping by moving quickly on emergency shelters and not focus on a million dollar apartments for these folks. Um, I'm also the the holding candidate that said, this is not only a housing issue. This is, like you've mentioned, Adam, a mental health problem, a drug addiction problem. Prop 47 has failed the people of California when you decriminalize drug offenses. Uh, you also have uh, the, the lack of mental health beds. Um, some of my opponents running for mayor were in positions of leadership at the state level, at the federal level, to solve this crisis. All of a sudden, they want to run for mayor. So I'm saying you want more of the same, go <laughs> pick the other candidates. What is, is there a, just a gaslighting that's going on? Like, what's the end game? Is it money? Are the advocates up their ass? Yes. And by the way, uh, by the way, if you just announce yourself an expert in some field that you don't know anything about, fuck right off. Just because you've anointed yourself. I feel the same way about the ones that are anointed themselves experts in race. Fuck you. You don't get to just anoint yourself an expert in homelessness or whatever the subject is, and then we'll just dance to the retarded tune you're playing on your flute. No. Fuck you. This is nuts. I don't know who these people are. And I, I well, we'll play the clip sure. from uh, from last night's debate. <laughs> that was. Yeah, uh, it was last night. Okay. First, just, the first uh, debate of the mayoral season. Just yeah. to let you know who lives in this godforsaken town we call home. <laughs> election cycle to listen to everyone and agree to disagree. Fuck you, Biscayeno. You want to get the LAPD more money? Hey, hey, fuck hey, you. Hey, fuck hey, you. Hey, fuck hey, you, Biscayeno. Hey, get out. 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 You're a cop yeah. yourself. You're running a pro-cop, anti-unhoused campaign. You hate poor people. You're the you hate people poor people. Poor, sure. Don't even like you, Joe. They don't even like you. We don't that's want not necessarily. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's the se second of six disruptions. Los Angeles, Joe. Sure, we want, that's we want more of the same. Yeah, Listen to do. these guys. <laughs> the police, Joe. We don't want you. you sure. And when you're getting shot at, who are you going to call? Nine one one. No, somebody it's in like, so other than your, in a windbreaker. Yeah. Other than your daughter and your son piping up in the <laughs> audience, did anyone else disrupt the thing? Yeah, I, I, first off, th this, there's this notion that I've been really like drilling down on, which is they have these cockamamie ideas, but the, the idea has some sort of merit to it. The first idea, you know, they go... Uh, away from cops or away from homelessness, but they'll, they'll go, we need to switch over to renewable fuel sources, solar and wind and geothermal and all that. We need to, that's idea number one. We need to shut down the nuclear stuff. Any, any fracking, that's no bueno. And the pipelines that got to be shut down. Okay. That's first thought. Okay. I'm, I'm with you I'm on your first thought. Right. What's plan two? It's like, no, no, no plan to right. shut everything down. Right. All right, ten minutes later, gas prices yeah. are five fifty a fucking right. gallon. Fucking Putin's bending us over a barrel and sodomizing right. us, and your fucking wind farms aren't working. So now what? And the same with yeah. the homeless. Same with police. It's a, right. like, oh, defund. There's too many folks in jail. Yep. Don't and this drug. Oh, okay. But then what? And they don't have a what. Yeah. They just have a plan for part one. Shut. Let's go on a road diet. Shut, narrow those roads down. Get people into mm. under bicycles because it would be like Amsterdam. Mm. Yeah, okay. Except for that doesn't Didn't happen, happen, and now we have more traffic. Could we think? Could we get some people in there to think logically about something? That has been the frustration. You you have a lot of the elected officials, including my colleagues on the city council, who ha are are bound down to this narrative, and I'm pushing back against this because again. Uh, these are the same people who actually protest in my home for connecting people to services and cleaning our streets. So it, it's that, 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 that narrative that 
a free-for-all. Let people come to Los Angeles, not be held accountable for crime, pitch a tent anywhere you want, and that's not the city that I know and love. My parents came here with nothing as Italian immigrants. If you go down... Worked their asses off here. You go down to Venice and... um, you talk to some of the homeless, or you go to San Francisco. This guy's came from different parts of the country. Yeah, yeah for good reason. The getting was good. Yeah, of course. That's how it works. That's part two. That's how everything works. There's a part one. You know, leave the homeless alone. They're noble people who just want to be free. And part two is people coming out from all parts. It's it's funny. The only fucking people coming from Texas to California are homeless. <laughs> Everyone else has yeah. got their shit to Texas because of the yeah. all the regulation and all the taxes. And you, you'll you'll hear radio ads of people um, from out of state saying, "Come to Texas, mm-hmm. come to Florida, come to North Carolina. It's safer here. It's cleaner here." And that breaks my heart because you know, Adam, we grew up in this town. We love L.A. and um, th- we have to restore our quality of life. And no other candidate can say that uh, they put on a bulletproof vest protecting this city for over 15 years as a as a police officer, even more so as a council member. I heard that guy say it on the video. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it, it's it's and when they asked, do you want to increase policing? I go, absolutely. Everything hinges on public safety in Los Angeles, in any big city. If people don't feel safe, they're not going to live here, do business here, raise their families here. So under my watch, I'm going to increase the police department. I'm going to um, bring more services uh, and more patrol to neighborhoods, uh, bring more um, um, bike patrol, footbeat units. You know, police science will tell you the more cops you have on the streets, the, the fewer crime you're going to have. And then you have a district attorney in L.A. who's completely out of touch. You elect a district attorney, too, and that's George Gascon. I, I support the recall. I'm the only candidate who supports the recall of George Gascon. You, you elect a prosecutor to do what? prosecute crimes. The social experiments that he's doing here is failing everyone. These policies are not helping anyone except the criminals out there. The uh, We got some video of a protester rushing the stage. Oh, yeah. Also, oh. Oh, yeah. it is so paper thin when they're like, you hate poor people or you're racist or you're homophobic. Fuck you. And, and the answer to all these people and the problem is, is, this stuff's been going on for a long time. They've been trying to corral everybody. And then what happens to everyone, they go, I'm not, I'm not, oh, no, I like poor people. They work cheap for me. And I don't you know, like, uh, I, I have a black friend. And the answer should be, fuck off. Right. You can't just call everyone racist or homophobic or whatever, poor or trans with no fucking history of anything. Ironically, it was on the heels. I think it was you, Joe, who was saying, like, we can we can disagree. We can not get yeah, along. But like, let's have the debate. And, of yeah. course, that just devolves to yelling. Uh, these are the, these are members of the Democratic Socialists of America Party, and uh, they all push back when you don't agree with them. They 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 fight, and uh, that's the discourse that we're seeing in this country. And I'm not going to put up with that BS in the city of Los Angeles. I may not agree with you. I just want to protect everyone, and including keeping our streets safe and clean. Bottom line, and not fall back into this false narrative that we're going to have fewer cops. Yeah, fewer cops are going to have more chaos in our streets. Well, and that's what I'd love to ask the people screaming. Do you live here? (laughs) Because I live here and I'm looking for a house and I have to pay a million, over a million dollars to live in a neighborhood I don't feel safe in? It's insane. Chris, before we play the clip, you can... This was all chronicled by the crystal-brained one, the (laughs) soothsayer named Adam Carolla. Over 10 years ago, I think it was L.A. Magazine came to me and said, you know, let's talk about you grew up in L.A. You've been here your whole life. What about L.A.? And uh, I think it's been over a decade. I gave the answer, and you tell me if it rings true. If I remember correctly, uh, everyone else is like, you know, uh, Danny DeVito, comedian, or actor, Adam Carolla, come with grouch. <laughs> That's right, grouch. But, but tell me if what I say rings true from over a decade ago. Well, we'll play the, the tape of you guys up on stage and somebody rush the stage. Yep. To policing, one heckler even rushed the stage. Oh. Oh. That's Councilman that Joe Scaino. Yeah. Somebody yeah. left the stage. Rushing toward the heckler before Look, Joe, Joe gets up to the front of the stage. Joe's in front of Karen Bass. What a man. I'm telling you, the instincts are still there. As, as, uh, and that, that shows, uh, uh, you know, you got to leave from the front and lead with urgency and, and protect people. Yeah, because well, somebody is, left. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> others <laughs> hid behind the podium. Yeah, uh, someone went full Matt Stafford. <laughs> <laughs> Turtled. <laughs> Took a sip of water and. Uh, Turned away. That was brutal. Um, all right. Did um, I? So I find myself having these conversations with uh, sane people in my world 
with with guys like Garcetti, like what is the end game? I don't get it. You're seeing what's going on around you. You travel through the town. Nothing is you're implementing is effective. Like why are we staying the course? Our city council or COVID, for yeah. instance. Like why are they so married to COVID? Yeah. Why are we still discussing? Well, we'll we'll open the schools, but we can do a mask mandate. But but uh, we'll lift it in uh, you know in theaters, but we won't do it at school. What what is it? What yeah. how, what are the how do these people Adam, think? What, the, where's the logic? I'm with you. The frustrations. Uh, I've had a front row seat of this craziness taking place. I'm one of 15 council members, part of the legislative branch. Again, why I'm running for mayor and why I've been calling to end these mandates and move back to normalcy. We have a universal access to vaccines. God, we went to the Super Bowl, seventy thousand plus fans. Okay. And I'm, I'm done with these mandates. I'm, I'm the only one who voted against these mandates in small restaurants and, and businesses. We've got to be done. I'm actually, I voted four times, the last four times to, um, they, my colleagues want to um, extend the emergency orders. We are done. Okay? What's in it for them we, other than they're just a bunch of fucking hand-wringing cunts? Power. <laughs> it's power. I'm in the point where I'm like listening to the people of the city I'm willing to give up that emergency power because people are suffering. Even the the the, the rents are. We have to end these rent moratoriums. People are not paying rent, and these small mom and pop property owners are calling me and saying, "We we um, they're, we're banking. These are senior citizens banking on their rent, and they're not getting it." Dawson has from uh, 2010. Oh boy, let's hear it. Coming up on 12 years. <laughs> My assessment of what what I think about LA. Everyone does this thing where they go, you can get to the ocean in 25 minutes. You can get to the mountains in an hour. Isn't that wonderful? I guess the answer is yes, but the school system is unusable. The traffic is horrible. Businesses are fleeing. I don't, I don't give credit to Via Ragosa or the city council for the mountains or the oceans. That has to do with plate tectonics. I give them credit for a graffiti problem that's so bad the street signs have to be covered with barbed wire. I give credit to God for doing a fair to middling job creating the place, and to Via Ragosa and the city council for fucking it up. Potholes and a holes. That's Los Angeles. That's twelve fucking years ago. What was I? Ro- look, everyone does it. I love California. Don't you look foolish? They go. I love oh, Malibu. It's beautiful. Yeah, you think the city council yeah. dug the You're fucking welcome. Marianas yeah. Trench? They <laughs> they're fucking everything up. But yes, it's from a topography. Yes. From, it's wonderful. Speaking of the Super Bowl, they had, uh, I think, a glamour shot of M- MacArthur Park, if I remember correctly, oh. and it looked glorious. Oh, and it's like, gleaming. yeah, anything in this town, any little pocket can look nice for a short period of time. But From a distance. Yeah, yeah from a distance, but like, don't look too close. Much like the aging star, don't look yeah. too close. Right. Not, not very many candidates are giving up their seat to run for mayor. Mm-hmm. I, I could easily get reelected. I got 70% favorable rating in my own district, but I, too, like you, have had it. And I, it starts at the executive level. As a chief executive of the city, it starts at the top, coming in this with the lens of quality of life. I, I patrol, I was a senior lead officer for eight years of my 15 at LAPD. I actually patrolled my own neighborhood and, and dealt with quality of life, graffiti, tree trimming, lighting, gangs, um, putting bad guys in jail. And it starts at the top. And I can tell you, as mayor, I'm coming at this in the lens of public safety. I'm kind of I'm like the inside outsider candidate here, understanding the bureau, the bureaucracy, and having unclogged the bureaucratic red tape. I've got that no BS, and I've proven the leadership. And uh, there's folks who are running who now a billionaire just joined the race, and I got the experience that money can't buy. Yeah, I I think at this point anything other than st- staying the course. The yeah. course isn't yeah. a course; it's a Bloom that leads into a river of shit and LA is basically on it and there's just going to have to be a reset. Now, the sad thing I always talk about for all the folks who vote how they vote, why do we why is it necessary that we bottom out before we change course? You know, we have New York to look at. Times Square was a shit show. People are getting, ourselves to look at, we, we were getting robbed yeah. and everyone who jogged in Central Park got raped. And then somebody showed up. Giuliani's like, no more. We're, we're laying down the law. We're going to clean the shit up. And then we cleaned it up. 
And then we went, ah, we'd rather go back to where we are. And, and the answer from Los Angelinos, when I talked to people who lived here, and m- many of them have lived here for you know decades, it's like, well, when are we going to change course? When we bottom out. <laughs> okay. Why, do, why must we go through the process of bottoming out? Yeah. You know, why do we have to wait till Bill Maher's tired <laughs> of Los Angeles before we change course? Yeah. That, that's, I, that drives me insane. Like, and you know what you just made it sound like? We're the addicts, and people like Joe are coming in to do the intervention, and we're like, fuck you, I know what's best for me. Right, right, right. Yeah, why do we have to OD and flatline on the fucking street before we seek some help? And you're right. It's like when my wife says, Joe, we should consider leaving L.A. Bullshit. We're not leaving. Okay, our parents came here with nothing. This city has given us so many opportunities. It's gone to shit. And I'm tired of it. And I can only have done so much as a one of 15 members. And why should we leave? Mm. We push back against this narrative of, of being a free-for-all city, that you can do anything you want, a, a city of, of chaos, a city where crime's being committed and not, no consequences, a city that doesn't embrace its own cops. And that's what I said last night. The first thing I'm going to do as mayor, I'm going to look at the eyes of the LAPD and say, listen, I see you. I respect you. I was one of you. I got your back. And I'm, I'm going to uh, – and, and I see. I, it's like – but at the same time, it, don't tarnish the badge. I'll be the first to hold you accountable. But we need a mayor, a leader who has proven – to show that he or she can lead. And I've done that. I've done this already. It's just like I take it citywide. Well, another talking point for your another plank in your platform I, I'm is... I'm campaign manager here, Adam <laughs> Crow. I love it, it. It wasn't that L.A., and, and this has happened in, in other cities as well, it wasn't that we just sort of opened the door to homelessness or lawlessness or you know shutting down schools or whatever, all the bad decisions we've made. It was that we simultaneously put the screws to people who pay taxes, follow laws, and are citizens. So while we were making it easier for people to walk into Targets and steal 900 bucks worth of merchandise, we were making it harder for the small business owner who wanted to put a patio on the back of his restaurant. So it ain't just making it easier for criminals. It's punishing Taxpayer. Those who are abiding by the law. You right? get punished for following the law, essentially playing by the rules. It, it's a two-pronged thing. You have to do them both. You have to shift the emphasis to the people that are breaking the laws, doing the drugs, not paying the taxes, putting the graffiti out there, and so on and so forth. And you simultaneously have to create a climate for folks yeah. who want to start a business and pay taxes and hire yeah. people. you got to make it easier for those people, right. too, you assholes. Well, our jails are still closed. <laughs> they're call, they're claiming COVID. Oh. That uh, you know, um, if you misdemeanor crimes um, are you know you just cite and release the catch and release nonsense. So what message that says? You know, you're right. It, it, the, the businesses. How far are, can they like, ride this COVID donkey? Yeah. It's like they're riding the COVID yeah. mule to hell. Like enough of it. It's two years, idiots. Yeah, Let enough of it. open to this and get rid of the mass at school. Like, and by the way, I don't like the optics of you stumbled on to something called COVID and you're like, oh, great. I'm never going to let this My go. Precious. Yes. I'm, oh, I'm going to fucking nurse this. As long. I don't, what, what's your mindset? So you got a little, you got your emergency powers and you're <clears throat> a sensible politician would be, well, let's get this over as fast as we can because I don't want a dominion over everybody for perpetuity. But you people are hanging on with both hands. What's that say about you as a politician? Well, Simultaneously calling everyone else a dictator, mm-hmm. who you disagree with, mm-hmm. while I'm, you're I'm, being yeah. a dictator. I'm the only elected official in city council that's calling for the end of this, this, these emergency orders. I, I mean, it, it's a power oh my grab. God. The next clearly. mayor's going to inherit them. That's right. <laughs> it's a power grab. Uh, Can I ask one Joe, question? Yes. Um, you know, we we're talking about homelessness, and we we're talking about you know all the craziness on the streets. And like you said, you like Adam said, you have step one. Well, where's step two? Step three? And you mentioned you you have housing for people. You have somewhere safe for them to go. And wouldn't you agree? Because we've talked about it so much on this show. 
not just our quality of life as citizens, but it is inhumane yes. to leave people dying on the street, to li- living and dying yep. on the street. Yep. Why doesn't anyone say well, that? You, you, you heard from the, the these so-called advocates uh, last night that we heard they tried to disrupt the uh, the the debate. It's they're they're saying you got to give the homeless people a right to lie anywhere they want. I said, bullshit, you're giving them a right to die by prolonging their stay on the sidewalk. And you know what, last night? Hundreds of beds were available. Hundreds of beds. These aren't, by the way, so they're not... So a sidewalk should not be a- available. Ugh. Sorry, Adam. No, if there's right. a place for them to go, the sidewalk, the park, the beach should be off limits. And that's my actually safer streets.la plan is we'll have a- a- enough beds to clear the encampments and we'll also enforce a no camping law citywide. Mm. Well couple things first off these assholes aren't advocates they're anarchists yes that's the real name they don't want advocacy suggests you have some plan you have no plan your plan is anarchy fine your fucking stepdad doesn't love you we get it now you're taking it to the streets fuck right off number one number two i've talked to dr drew about this a lot of these guys are getting hooked up with speed. Speed makes you fucking violent. And a lot of these people have to carry weapons because you live on a street. And you need fucking people go for a walk. They carry a golf club. If you're going to sleep on the street amongst criminals, you might want to have a machete or a pistol. Now you got the speed, the violent speed, and now you have the weapons. And now you have these guys just wandering around right. with a weapon beaked out on speed. Yeah, shit's going to happen. Again, I'm, I'm the only candidate who has called for the reforming of, of the mental health laws in California. I agree with Dr. Drew. He and I keep close. Um, we need more conservatorship because folks are not in the right mind frame to say yes to help. We need to redefine gravely disabled. And let's stop talking about this homeless issue being a housing issue. What? This is a hospitalization issue. People are struggling. They need longer term care. They need to see a doctor. And then before they come back out, they need to be um, free and clear of, and, and by the uh, and way, sober. put them in, you know, put, go Joe Arpaio, put them in a fucking tent city in the desert. They don't need to get a condo that Gina can't afford. The, literally, can't. the plan is let's give the guy a free condo that taxpaying Gina and her husband can't really afford in a neighborhood they couldn't buy no. in. Uh, number, number one, uh, quickly on Dr. Drew, you know, he was trying to. <laughs> donate his time to yeah. the city council for the homeless. The L.A. County, yeah. Those assholes yeah. voted him out, and then the Los Angeles Times did a hit piece on him. Like, yeah. I, 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 it, it, we can no yeah. longer listen to these people when a board certified physician says, "I'll work for free," and you yeah. go, "Now." Nah. Then, well, then there's something going on. It's a theme, as I talk about right, all the time. Right. It's not solving homelessness. Do you have yeah. any insight to that process? Well, when I'm elected mayor, Dr. Drew's going to be part of my administration. Oh, I haven't called him up on it yet, but uh, yeah. and, oh, sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> but again, you need to have subject, subject matter experts lead on this issue. And um, I, I, I've been doing the work, and I'm going to take this citywide to clean our streets, connect people to services, so they're not dying on our streets. All right. The uh, website is Joe Buscaino. I'll spell it B U S C A I N O dot com. He's a Democrat, people from uh, Los Angeles, so it's safe to vote for him. <laughs> Probably the most reasonable moderate Democrat you'll find. <laughs> yeah, but a Democrat, so my mom might, you might get my mom's vote. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let me These tell you. These cannolis about, didn't help? Oh, oh boy. Can, homemade cannolis, brought the red sauce last time. What a paisan. <laughs> All right. Uh, Ravi's waiting, so let me hit uh, X chair from the first moment. I sat in my X chair. I thought, ah, oh, that's what a real office chair is supposed to feel like. And it's true, and I told you guys I bought an X chair long before they came on as sponsors just to have at the home. Now I'm sitting on one here at the studio. I've never looked forward to sitting before until I got my X chair. Can your current nice. office chair give you a massage, a heat, or cool you down? X chair can with LMX massage and temperature regulation exclusively designed for X chair. Plus the customized support of X chair's patented dynamic variable lumbar or DVL. Try X chair for yourself free for 30 days. That's free for 30 days. Once you realize how much better your chair should be, you'll never go back. It's X chair, right, Dawson? Go to xchairadam.com now. That's the letter X, chair, adam.com, or call 1 844 4 X chair for $100 off your order. X chair has a 30 day guarantee of complete comfort, and you can finance your purchase for as little as $30 a month. X chair, adam.com. All right, we'll talk to our old friend, actor, and writer, and director, Ravi Patel, and we'll do that right after this. It's 
It's time for Nicaraguan Name That Movie with Adam's buddy Oswaldo. See if you can guess which movie this famous line is from. I must break you. If you said Rocky IV, I must break you. You're correct. Now, back to the show. Ravi Patel has joined us. Our dear friend's got a movie out called Butter. It'll be available in select theaters and video on demand uh, tomorrow. Uh, Ravi, you're outdoors. Are you in Nashville? Did you move to Tennessee? What's up, friends? Uh, yeah, buddy. I am. Uh, I've moved to Nashville, which I think I moved here last time we talked. I'm in a park. Uh, and my car, so we have this extra car that we never use that my wife's been telling me to sell. She hates it because she's like, nothing ever works. I'm like, you know, it's paid for. It works great. There's no miles on it. We never use it. I have friends in town. We go to a hike. We bring the car. We get back in the car. The key fob doesn't work. So now, uh, and the, and the, oh, the park closes. See the sign? Can you see the sign? Are you, can you, are you, can you see my video? Yeah. 4 p.m. Mm -hmm. 4 p.m. Mm -hmm. It's about 4.05. Four oh five, mm -hmm. so that's when the park closes. So uh, yeah, and now the the people are coming to help, and uh, you know I'm still podcasting though because you know that's what I do. Yeah, what I hero. fucking do. What uh, what kind of car you is it? You know what I'm saying? I'm a hero. Maybe I can help. <laughs> well, Adam. Yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. You are the guy to speak to. Uh, it's a 2013 Ford Fusion Hybrid. Mm hmm. Uh, titanium. You know, not that you care, but, uh, you know, what's that? By the way, I'm doing a podcast. <laughs> there, there's not one piece of titanium on that vehicle. Oh. They just name it that. Yeah, sure. Sweet. It's, cool name. <laughs> it's like the diamond. Of, yeah. It's like you know, those infomercials for frying pans for Yo. 14 bucks. The diamond platinum yes. plus. There's none of those materials. It's all banged out of <laughs> sheet yeah. metal in China. The actual stuff that yeah, has titanium. titanium in it. They don't label it. Yeah, he already joined Nancy. He's got to know. <laughs> yeah. So uh, the key uh, fob didn't unlock the car? The key fob, well, uh, actually, I'd never locked the car. Oh, God, this I just sound dumber and dumber. So when we got here, I noticed when we left that the key fob wasn't locking the car. I'm like, oh, well, no one's going to no steal this piece of shit for it anyway. I don't need to lock it. And then, of course, we came back. And the reason why it didn't lock is because the fob had stopped working somewhere on our drive. And mm. yeah, so I can get in. I just can't start it. And there's a whole backup system where you can put the fob in a specific spot in the car and it's still supposed to start, but that didn't work either. I hate mm. key fobs so much. I miss putting a key in an ignition. I don't care for the fob. I yeah. hate it. Not a fob it's guy. It's stupid. Yeah. yeah well, Easy what, to what, lose. What was wrong with the key? What, Nothing. Was the, was the key not working for anyone? <laughs> I. Uh, you're right. I, I'll, I'll put the key up there with uh, my son once told me five years ago. Uh, I said, hey, go outside, have some fun in the sun, blow some bubbles. Like the bubble blower's broken. Your mouth? Like, what do you mean? <laughs> He's like, it's out of batteries. I said, you can't exhale into a hoop. Like you, it's too much effort to turn a key, <laughs> yeah, a quarter like turn. <laughs> like they weigh too much. I couldn't yeah. possibly go into the restaurant no. with the keys. Hate it. It's too heavy. Yeah. No. I, I, I agree. Over innovation. Over innovation. I, f I feel this way about uh, TVs that don't have a button uh -huh. that you can turn them and on, on and off. off like a power button. Yeah. Like I, because when it goes black, yeah. you are naked. You're losing the rest. You're you got to go audience. analog. You're losing the audience. I'm sorry. I need a button. <laughs> I want a button on the side. I want yeah. to heat it up. So uh, what would you call it? No, AAA? I had the same problem last night. I couldn't find the remote. I had to unplug the TV. <laughs> I know. Right. I'm with you, Adam. I am with you. Thank you. Right, uh, I'm freezing, by the way. What, freezing. Yeah, we're uh, so. Are you waiting for AAA or what are you doing there? Well, I've got a couple things happening, a couple plans in place. I've got <laughs> AAA on the way, um, and then I've also got my buddy's wife uh, bringing a battery over for the key fob. Oh. So I'm hoping one of those. Uh, uh, did I lose you? No, yeah. we're here. I'm hoping one of those comes. I'm hoping one of those comes comes through. I'm just glad that I'm able to get this on the air for America to listen to. <laughs> this is. This is the content they fucking want, isn't it, Adam? Stars, oh, yeah. they're just like us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just logistics. <laughs> so how is Nashville treating you? It sounds like you're enjoying Nashville. Friends coming in, going for a hike. Oh, I love it, man. I love it so much. It's, a, it's so cool. Like, Nashville itself is a little 
like it's 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 not yet my favorite city. I'll be honest, but I love I, I love being out of L.A. I heard the tail end of that conversation. I go to L.A. all the time. I was just there a couple of weeks ago. It's like Biff's future. Like it's just oh, like it, it's just like everything's just fucking nuts in L.A. And I'm I'm glad I don't live there anymore. And I'm I love visiting, but um, it's so peaceful. We have a big house that we couldn't afford in L.A. at all. Um, I didn't make as much money last year as I usually do. And I would have been really stressed in LA, but instead I feel very, a lot of peace and I live close to both sets of grandparents. It's a good life. And yeah. it's been super convenient for work because it's kind of in the middle of the country. Yeah. So it's, it's close for me to like, I can fly anywhere really quick. Like I was doing a movie in New York. I, I could go back and forth. Like sometimes in the same day I could fly, which is insane. Um, I love it. it. It's, it's just a good, normal normal place here's an observation that just popped in my head uh, first off i've not spoken to anyone who moved out of la who regretted it mm-hmm. the only people i ever talked to who move out of la and or new york who regret it are the ones who went to either la or new york <laughs> oh they oh they, from one of the yeah. they, <laughs> they've lived in new york their whole life then they moved to la and they can't get yeah. a decent slice yeah. you know or whatever right. sure. and vice versa but no one moved to, to nashville and nobody moved to utah mm-hmm. and nobody moved to portland and hated it mm-hmm. they all love it so maybe oh, there is right. something about new york and la because those are the only horror stories i've ever heard I also think people leave them after they've used those cities for what they're worth, which for a lot of people, unless you're from there, which I think if you're from one of those places, then it's a good place. There's a good reason to stay. But most people go to L.A. or New York for kind of that achievement or and or wild time of their lives. And then when you're if you if you get tired of that, then it's a good time to leave because you can have a slower, simpler life in other places. That said, Nashville, I mean, I'm sure you've been here. This place is super weird. I mean, <laughs> the downtown is one of the craziest things I've ever seen. Like, it's just like just just drunk chicks walking around everywhere. And it's also just like kind of like Disneyland for I got to say this. How do, what's the politically correct way to say this? It's for like uh, <sighs> The, the, I'm just going to say people in general, but you know what I'm saying? Like it, it's, there's a, this is like Vegas for a certain kind of person mm. and they're all downtown and it's hilarious. Talking sort of drunken white trash, fat chicks, stuffing themselves into Daisy Dukes, celebrating bachelorette parties. Yes. yes. Yeah. That's exactly what I was saying. I, yes. I, I was, yeah, yes. I was just down there. I've been there quite a few times in the last year, but, but uh, most recently, Jimmy Kimmel's daughter got married in Nashville, and I just <laughs> struck out alone and walked uh, up and down, and there were tons of bachelorette parties, Woo! all getting drunk, all in the back, you know, very like hayride, hee-haw, <laughs> just wearing, a, you know, hat sh- made out of balloons shaped as a dick on their head and yeah, getting drunk girl. at 1130 in the morning. And I got, I, I have room in my world for the, the rich pageantry <laughs> of life. Oh, I like- yeah. It's a very debutante city in general. And by the way, the downtown thing, the funniest thing is those, those things that people, those like those bars, those bar cars that they yeah. drive, there's no seatbelts on them. No. Oh, the craziest crazy. thing I've ever seen. Yeah. The one place there should be. Yeah. No, there's there there half of them are standing up and dancing to Coolio like when they're <laughs> yeah. when they're going by. But I also will say this about uh, Nashville, I notice, speaking of women, uh, I went into just a local bar, just sat down, was gonna watch a game and have a drink. A lot of very well healed, slightly older, attractive women mm. live in or at least coming to Nashville mm. to have brunch. There's a whole second class of hot, hot, older, little milfy yeah. hey, Nashville. Have you noticed that? That makes sense. Well, it's a very, I mean, like Nashville feels like an epicenter for like white sororities. Like I think it's where they go after college and they come here and it fe- it feels like that. Like there's a whole part of Nashville that is just like so wealthy and over the top and super nice and, uh, a lot of very pretty former sorority girls. I think that's what you're talking about. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. Man, Definitely it's also so beautiful. That. I'll tell you what, and everyone's moving here from like New York, LA, Chicago. Um, it's pretty exciting in that sense. Oh, and oh, the hostility against California people. Oh my God, it's hilarious. <laughs> they literally, to your face, like this one woman's like, well, you know what we say? Don't bring, what did she say to me? Don't California or Tennessee. They love saying that mm. to our face. I'm like, that's like racism against the state, but also it's confusing. Like I'm Indian. I'm not even from California. Like, why did you say that to me? <laughs> and I could tell she was certainly friendly, but I'm like, I, it doesn't even make any sense. Like I moved here they for a reason. It. They're basically saying your politics <laughs> fucked up California. Don't come over here yeah. and bring your politics. We'll, yes. You'll fuck up our city too. Yeah. Did uh, uh, you yeah. must have uh, zillowed your house? Oh, I mean, you you got your house. It's been two years or more. By the way, what they're really getting are better real estate prices. That's what they're really getting right. because of us. Um, oh yeah, my house is worth so much more than I paid for it, and and we only closed on it in like May, and it's 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 already worth uh, more than thirty percent what I paid for it. <laughs> what it was really? It hasn't even been a year yet. Hasn't been a year yet. I'm up 30%. Now, that said, I did good. You know, I'm a Patel. I'm an Indian dude. I know what I'm doing. But, uh, you know, it's, it, this is a hot place. Nashville's hot. Well, speaking of which, I just, oh, by looked, the way. I just looked up the weather. It's 34 degrees. We're, I wanted to be inside his car. Like, we're even worried about you. Yeah, you can do it from a sound booth. Yeah, you want to be my buddy and my cousin? Oh, by the yeah. way, Adam, I got to let you in. Whenever I'm doing the renovation on my house, I got to let you in. I'm doing something that I think you would love. I'm basically creating my own little resort downstairs because, again, it's so cheap here. Um, and it's going to be like an indoor hot tub, a sauna big enough to do a hot yoga, like a hot yoga room slash sauna. Mm. There's a whole activity situation happening downstairs. I feel like I want your thoughts on. Oh, I'll have thoughts for sure. It, it, Adam, I, th I want to know if this applies to you because I think it applies to me and Brian. This is the first time in my life it has ever been cool to leave New York or L.A. Usually it's like, well, I want to leave, but it's L.A. It's New York. Now it's actually cool not to be here. Oh, and not, you know, not only is it, you know, New York or L.A., there used to be some vague notions about moving to San Francisco mm -hmm. or some Have fun. maybe Seattle. Yeah. Not Idaho. No, now, now Coeur Lane. <laughs> has never seemed attractive. Now it is. Not a Dakota. Yes. Now it are Carolina. Right. Those were like, where the fuck is that? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like my my notion of a Carolina or an Idaho was you go there for basic training, right? And then once <laughs> the you've completed the punchline. seven weeks, you leave yeah. immediately and yeah. they ship you off to Vietnam. Like I was like, no, living there would be off the table. unthinkable. Now it is not. Who are your friends that you brought camping with you? Or sorry, hiking. Buddy, first of all, the car started. I want I want everyone to just exhale. We're, we're, we're good. Car's oh, on. Good. Uh, I got one of my best friends, Wit, who uh, let's go share. He he just went to this Porta John before we leave, so we can talk. We can we can say hi to him as he walked out. One of my best friends. We went to high school together. We went to L.A. together. There he is. Yeah, <laughs> Wit. That's Adam, that's Adam Crow in the gang. What's up, guys? Yeah, yeah. Wit. Which, yeah, no, number one or number two? It was number. I'm not, I'm not doing number two in a in a porta potty out here. So, so I wish Whit, everyone um, shared your sentiment with that. <laughs> Wit, and then my cousin Shivam, who's in from Charlotte. Uh, yeah, Wit and I, uh, we went we went to high school. Then uh, we were kind of best friends. Then we went to LA together. Did our early LA days, um, party days, and uh, yeah, he's here visiting. My buddy's about to get married. It's exciting stuff. Nice. So uh, it's interesting that some people just get to do what they want with their life. <laughs> I don't feel I have that. Mm, do tell. That isn't. But I mean, it's you don't like, have that? Uh, just like, oh, I'm going to move or I'm going to do this or I'm going to do that. I do a lot of different things, but I don't have that sense of freedom or wonderlust or whatever it is that you have. Or you well, just that's, go, We're moving. That's the most depressing thing I've ever heard because I'm guessing you have way more money than me. <laughs> and if you don't feel freedom, then I don't know what the fuck I'm doing over here. Well, yeah. I mean, I'm driving... Yeah. Adam, I'm driving a 2013 Ford Fusion. You think I'm happy? <laughs> <laughs> no, good. But you're doing the whole build-out with the sauna and the jacuzzi uh, and all uh, that stuff. Uh it's going to be, I'm telling you, it's like, it's going to be like Patel Resort. 
I, I can't wait. I'm so excited. How many square feet do you have down there? It's going to be 6K when it's done. Oof. The, the whole place? Not the whole, the whole place. Right. The whole place. So yeah, yeah. The yeah. downstairs is 3,000, upstairs 3,000. Oh, wow. Look at, me flexing, look at me flexing in the media. I don't care. Whatever. That's right. <laughs> Well, Whatever. That is a that is a lot of room. It's quite a spread. Yeah. And when you say it's, it's the the place is already built though, right? Or are you doing a the pla- ground place up? The place is built, so there's 4200 square feet um and uh then I'm adding another 1800 uh for this whole little sauna thing. Um this is the Ranger guy. Do you know who Adam Corolla is by any chance? Corolla? <laughs> Oh, that's embarrassing. He doesn't know who you are. I'm doing his podcast. He's great, but I, I'll, we're going to leave in a second. But things done. Sure yeah, good. yeah, yeah. Thank you so much for waiting. I appreciate it. Adam Corolla. Check him. Check him out. He's great. You really like him. Yeah. <laughs> I love him. Oh my god. That guy's not my demo. How old is that guy? Fourteen. He's a demo. He's a he's a white dude with a beard. He's definitely your demo. Hey, he's got to know who I am. Put him on that phone. That's what I. Oh, you want to get him? I'll ask him. I don't tell you. I don't think he knows who you are. Ask if he knows what the man show is. White guy with a beard. Come on. Hey, man. Hey, one more thing. Huh? He's a little. Um, my friend Adams. He's got a big. He's just a little upset, rightfully, because ninety percent of his audience are white dudes with beards, um, and so he's a little upset that you don't know who he is. Have you ever heard of the Man Show? The Man Show. Yeah. I want to say it rings a bell. You, you can talk. All you right. What's your name? Rings a bell. How yeah, rings a bell? I, I'll. Yeah. Andrew, Ranger Andrew, is that his name? Ranger Andrew. <laughs> How old are you, Ranger Andrew? 28. Uh, uh, see, he's a young guy. Ask your cool uncle. I didn't know he was that young. Uh, he was ask that him if he's uh, Crank Yankers. Has he heard of Crank Yankers? Crank Yankers. Have you heard of Crank Yankers? That rings a bell as well. He's fucking lying, by the way. He doesn't know who you are. <laughs> Uh, Corolla's, Corolla's on the way down. I shouldn't have done this show. This is horrible. Ask him, ask him if he's heard of Saved by the Bell, just so we can ironically say that rings a bell. <laughs> uh, hey, I really appreciate you waiting, bro. Thank Thank you so much. You yeah, we just started. Thank you so much. And sorry about this, if this is weird, but yeah, okay. <laughs> Yeah, this, thanks, bro. Oh, man, Ravi, this could have gone so viral if you got up in his grill and he, like, pepper sprayed <laughs> you and we had a hate crime uh, chronicle. Yeah. That- Let me tell you something. He is a sweetheart. He is a sweetheart. Well, um, uh, I'm no yeah, fan of him I'm because he's, he's ill-informed. <laughs> he's such a nice guy. He's in his he, 20s. Uh, he's out of my demo. He doesn't know. Mm-hmm. Parents listen to Love Line. That's right. So, uh, are you are you are you going to get back in your vehicle and drive back to your home? And and then a, a follow up yeah, question: How do you have forty two hundred yep. square feet? And how are you going to put three thousand or two thousand square feet underneath your home? Because you were talking about doing like a basement thing, right? Okay, if you're okay with it, I'm going to go sit in my car and I will and I will start riding home while I finish this conversation with you. Are you guys okay with that? Yes, sure. we're okay. okay. We're we're okay, okay. with it. Okay. Okay, good, good. Now, um, you, the last I we spoke, I think you were up on a hill and may have had some drainage issues. <laughs> <laughs> I love that that's what stays in your brain. Yeah, You're I don't, fucking I, weird. I don't remember your you fucking so kids' fucking names. But, <laughs> <laughs> but you were you so fucking weird. You were up on a hill, uh, you're having some drainage issues, and you were talking about building uh-huh. a retaining wall of some kind. And maybe even a swimming pool outside, but is uh, am I correct in any of that? Yeah, yeah. The swimming pool, the swimming pool. Wow, great, 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 great questions. This is my cousin Shivam. This is Adam Carolla. Hey, hey Shivam. You know who Adam Carolla is? Yeah. Oh, there you go. Hey, he knows who you are. I'm, oh, I'm balance half, the legend. I'm half healed. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it's. I'm really disappointed. The white guy with the beard didn't know who you were. That's super upsetting for both of us. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I was going to put in a pool. Uh, but then, uh, 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 can I hear it? Can you we're hear here, we're Yeah. Here. Um, I, I was going to put in a pool, uh, but now we're waiting to see how long we stay in this house because it's not really the best of expenses in terms of the value and the drainage issues. Since your audience cares so much about this stuff, there was a, it was just a sheet of, there's a sheet of rock at the bottom of my, and so it's just like, you know, that's, it just doesn't drain. So, so in that regard, I'm fucked. 
You guys don't remember the Is hot... Is that your question? Or- yes. You guys don't remember the hot drainage talk we had last it's time? It's not what stands out. Can I say what's funny about that is last time Ruby was on, he was home, he was drinking, and it was the day of the January 6th riots. Mm. So we talked a lot about that. Of course, I remember that's a fucking day in American history, but no, I don't remember the drainage <laughs> issues, Not the Adam. sheetrock problem. <laughs> He you know was, what's wild? Hmm. I don't think I remember that that was January 6th either. You were drinking. Yet I remember the drainage talk. <laughs> you were drinking and talking drainage, and you're also talking about building a fort for your daughter inside your house, I think. Yes! Why? Well, you know what? Adam, I didn't even know you fucking listened to me, man. <laughs> this is a... So touching that you remember these things. Well, not this um, time around, but last time I was in tent. <laughs> <laughs> then I realized it was all drainage talk. I kind of tuned out this time around. <laughs> Oh, oh boy! Oh, we were talking drainage on Take a Knee. That's why Gina okay. oh, and Bald yeah. don't remember. But I am—I'm accused of of many things, and one of them is not listening and not uh-huh. caring, and then the other is I get into arguments with dumb people all the time, where I go, "You said four thirty. I said four. Oh. The person who can't looking for their fucking sunglasses and they're mm-hmm. on their head. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm. Here's an interesting thought. <clears throat> the dumber you are, the more married you are to things you either said or didn't say, which yeah. is, I'm not resolute about things. If you go, we didn't talk about that. I won't go, God damn it. We did. I know we did. I'll just have, I have vague notions yeah, about stuff, but I will defer to yeah. whatever your thoughts are. But all the dumb people I've ever argued with, they Attached. fucking know Stand their ground. what they've said. Yeah. It's, in, it's, a, it's in, maybe they need to do that. Or maybe that's part of being dumb. Yeah, being Like, that's how arrogant. you stay dumb? Yeah. You don't have any new ideas or learn anything? Ravi, what are you saying to your cousin? <laughs> uh, you guys can see me talking to my cousin. I guess mm. that's how video works. Yeah. I was t- I was telling him to uh, stop. I, By the way, the irony of being accused of not listening is that I wasn't listening to anything you guys were saying. <laughs> that's fine. And I, I, was, I was telling my cousin, who's driving my car now, to tell the car in front of us, who's my my buddy and his wife who brought us the key to stop in Franklin and pick up dinner there. You guys are getting a lot of logistics. <laughs> well, <laughs> we will, uh, Ravi, you want to hang out while we do the, do the news oh. with us? <laughs> Why would you good, do that to him? Good instinct. You bet. I know. You, you bet. Let's, let's you. fucking keep going. I love it. He loves it. All right. Let me just make sure and get the uh, film out. Butter. I saw the trailer. Butter's very, final meal. Very. Oh, it's it's not Butter's. It's not oh, just yeah, Butter. Oh, yeah. We have to talk about that. I right, Butter's final yeah. meal. Oh, here. I just said Butter. Yeah, it's it's butter. Butter. It, 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 it changed butter. to Butter. Mm. Oh, it changed right. to Butter. Uh, <laughs> Ruby's very good. I saw it. He yeah. plays the wacky dog. No, wacky. Like He plays cool dog. Yeah, a cool, playful. I think wacky. I don't think he's wacky. Um, I don't know. It's a, look. It's a movie called Butter. I'm in it. It's very sweet. It's thoughtful. It's about empathy for people with differences. I actually think there's a social impact to it. It's in a bunch of theaters. And then I don't know what information they told you to share, but you should share that. <laughs> yeah, you can. Uh, well, that's what they said. The, it, it's, it's on demand. <laughs> it's on demand as well. All right, so we'll take a quick break. Ravi's gonna hang with us, and we'll come back and do the news right after this. Some hot uh, California vax news, but I feel like we covered that. So, so let's move on. Hopefully, our mask mandates here in LA should be lifting uh, by mid March, and and we'll we'll check back in about that. Um, you know how whenever somebody very elderly dies, and you make some joke about like, oh, what was it? Skydiving accident? Hold on. Yeah. Back to the mask mandate mm-hmm. for a second. I I did a little social experiment, so I don't wear my mask in airports right. at all. Ever. I don't walk in with it. I I did once upon a time, but I've just decided recently nothing. Um, nobody says anything. Mm-mm. And the rest of the populace in an airport is 1000% masked. No one else has joined me in this folly. It is their, the compliance in a world where we can't get people to agree on anything or comply with anything. You know, we make a mandate that says no hosing your driveway down. Uh, we're in a drought. Uh, half the neighborhood's hosing their driveway down or you must recycle or whatever the compliance. It is 1000 percent compliance wow. in, in the airport. 
So and we can be coached. Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh. Crate trained. That's right. Yes. Another word for it. Well, I have the story of an elderly couple whose family you have definitely heard of, not uh, not dead of natural causes. The sister of Wall Street con artist uh, Bernie Madoff and her husband were found dead last week in an apparent murder-suicide, 90 years old, 87 years old. Really? Why now? According to the South Florida Sun Sentinel, the Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office said in a statement Sunday that two elderly residents have been found dead in Boynton Beach. Uh, Both the 90-year-old man and the 87-year-old woman were discovered dead with gunshot wounds. 87-year-old Sandra Weiner Weiner, is the sister of Madoff, who died in prison last year after scamming thousands of investors out of billions of dollars in a Ponzi scheme. No other information available at this point, but they do consider it a murder suicide. Um, so a couple things. One is, I think Bernie's son killed himself, mm-hmm. too. Mm-hmm. On the time, right? Yeah, Earlier, closer. Yes. closer. Yeah, yeah, right after the, yeah, sorry. The yeah, story. so there's a lot of, you know, I don't know, bad juju or karma or whatever is visited that family. But, Ravi, uh, murder, suicide. I, I'm Life down. insurance. This is uh-huh. a life insurance issue. Mm. To who? That's what I think. I think I think there's some some conspiracy going on here because at that age, look, they're on the way out anyway. I think potentially, I don't know anything about life insurance, but this sounds like a like something that would be in there that you, you don't get the money if there's a suicide. Just throwing that out there. Interesting. See, my deal is is if I was, you know, hatching this plan, I would be like, yeah, yeah, okay. I'll shoot you, and then don't worry, I'll kill myself. Yeah. I'll be right there. Yeah. Scouts on it. I'm on like, heels. At a certain point, yeah. they'd go, well, how about I shoot you? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah. Count okay. of three. Count we, of three. We already got a plan. Don't mess with it now. Now, let's say I work up an appetite shooting you. I could go out uh, and have a meal. I mean, I'm kill myself later. I like, will shoot myself after. Now, immediately yeah. after. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's my, I'd like to say bye to my girlfriend for sure. I just refreshed uh, a daily news from today. The first line is Bernie Madoff's sister, Sandra Weiner, allegedly fired the shots in the suspected murder-suicide. So she got to go first. No. That left her husband. She got to, she got to shoot wanna... first. That left her husband. Yeah, she yeah. got to go. I mean, right. she got to Yes. Oh, shoot. go first oh, means something right. else I'm... to me. I, I assume it's <laughs> no, I mean, hard I... to do. Yeah. Well, did you know, because I found this out from a dateline, you can, uh, I'm going to fuck this up because I haven't thought about this in years. You can buy other people's life insurance policies. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Companies That's do it all the time. That's crazy to it's, me. It's, it's, You're like betting on them to die. That's right? where my sitcom Gay Butler comes from. <laughs> That's AIDS right. Butler. AIDS Butler. Sorry. Thank you, Brian. Jesus. AIDS Butler. That's I want to give the proper due. Ravi, you could star in this. <laughs> AIDS Butler. Yeah, Actually, yeah, good. yeah. yeah that sounds like the perfect vehicle for me to tank. Can I, um, can I pitch you the theme? I I would, I would like to be pitched. Yeah. I I am offer only. So yeah, come on through. All right. Well, let me just pitch. Yeah. I wouldn't call you in to read, but we could do like, we could do like a chemistry test. (laughs) (laughs) You and Alan Alda. (laughs) Yeah. We'll just go out to dinner and just sort of see how we get along. But all right, I'm just going to be the showrunner. Let's hear AIDS Butler. It's going to be a long running sitcom, by the way, this isn't a movie. It's a sitcom. Yeah. This is a series. This is a series. series. Yeah, multi camera. Yeah. Yeah. C- can your cousin hear us? Yeah, he can hear us. We're, uh, we're about to, you're about to hear about, don't tell anyone about this. It's not out yet. It's called AIDS Butler. Go ahead. I just want to make sure he doesn't have AIDS because it, it could get offensive. Is he a butler? He doesn't have AIDS, but he's just gotten like really rich. He bought a yacht recently Ooh. and he's really young. Ooh. So I think, I think, I think STDs are in the mix for him soon. <laughs> Could I just get a verbal confirmation from him that he doesn't, in fact, have AIDS? Because he might not tell you everything. Uh, I know nothing. I I know nothing. No, <laughs> no AIDS? He doesn't know. All right. Well, that didn't sound like an affirmative. Oh, it's from Anchorman, apparently. All right. I'm just going to move forward with this idea. Okay. Yeah, please do. Please All get right. us out of here. <clears throat> okay. AIDS Butler. It's easy. Um, they had, I, I dreamt this up many years ago. There are these things called viatical agreements or settlements or whatever, where you can buy someone else's life insurance. And back in the craze of AIDS in the 80s, the early 90s. AIDS mania. AIDS mania. There was a lot of guys who got AIDS, and it's it was a death sentence. And a lot of them were younger, successful, single dudes who had life insurance. And so the thing is, is they would sell them 
to like retiring right. couples from Florida right. because look, you've got AIDS, we have no cure. You've got a year, maybe a year and a half to live. Uh, your family just owned you because you were gay uh, years ago. You got you don't want to leave those assholes anything. And your thing is like, I have a million dollar life insurance. Give me six hundred grand, and I'll travel the world for the last year of my life. And all right, I, I I don't mind living in that world. That makes sense to me. But some of them never died because AZT and triple cocktails and stuff were came along right at that point, and they spent some of the money and resources and got help, and they never died. Now, good for them, but Wait, the, is it real? Yeah, this is real. Based on a true story. Based on a true story. <laughs> Loosely. Wow. wow. But the elderly Floridian couple that gave their nest egg up uh, is never going to get it back. Yeah, 600 k Because no one is dying, mm -hmm. and you only get the life insurance when the person dies. And the, and by the way, you know, look no further than Magic Johnson. Right. When you get AIDS and you're 34, you can go on to your 80s, right? So yeah. uh, they want their money back. The guy with AIDS doesn't want to give them their money back, and it goes in front of a judge. And the judge mm -hmm. says, uh, give them their money back, and he says, I don't have it. I spent it all. But the couple still thinks they're hiding. He's hiding the money somewhere. So the judge orders the AIDS patient to be their butler. You must now work <laughs> off. You work, have to work your tab off. Yeah. So now this guy's living the young gay guy is living in the retirement villa in Florida He's with the, the elderly villages. couple and hijinks ensue. Yeah. I mean, it was actually a Coen brothers movie till we got to the court case. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. It was a perfect setup for a Coen brothers movie. And then you turned it into network money, which I thought was nice. <laughs> and uh, then, you know, let me look, we don't have to work out a B and C stories, but the couple, every time the guy goes, he goes, I'm going to take a Pilates class and he leaves and they're constantly thrashing through yeah. his room, looking right. through the mattress. They're always, they think the money is stashed right. somewhere, <laughs> but at a certain point they turn a little bit, like they see his sure. ways, yeah. you know what I mean? And they see that he's, he's in the, uh, you know, he's in the senior center mm -hmm. and he's doing, he's leading an interpretive dance right. class and they're all Water going relics. along with yeah. him and they're starting to like him over there. Well, and at this point, is he trying to get AIDS because he's just miserable with this death, with this life sentence of being a butler? Oh, he has. Well, he AIDS. has AIDS. He's just not dying. He, he has AIDS. He's gotten through the AIDS. Yeah. Is he trying to get back to the AIDS? Like sicker? <laughs> I don't think so. No, I don't. I don't think he wants double AIDS. I don't think that's part of the okay. story. Now, okay. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm, I'm sorry. Ravi. That Ravi, that's insane. Would you be. Uh, <laughs> that's ridiculous. Now, that's not plausible. <laughs> It's not that you're overweight now, but would you be willing to lose a couple of pounds for a really good roll? What the fuck are you saying, Adam? <laughs> do, Adam, do you mean in like a Dallas Buyers Club kind of Well, way? I don't see you as the elderly couple. Uh, I, right. You know what I'm saying? There's only so many roles here. Unless I can break you off a smaller role like uh, security at the at Retirement Villa. Right, but the clubhouse. I, I think you want a little more meat on your bones. Speaking you know what I mean? Adam, the, short, the short answer is I will do fucking anything to get a job. Okay. Uh, I'm always desperate. Yeah, I, right. just did a, I just did a podcast in 33 degrees weather. What else do I have to <laughs> that, That's true, right? All right. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll have my people reach out to yours. I Again, we're not asking you to audition. No, the maybe... answer is yes, I'm in. Oh, I'm all in. right. Whatever okay. Stop drilling. Give it oil. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Really, any job will do. Gina, okay. what the hell were we talking about? Uh, I think AIDS. AIDS Butler? AIDS Butler? Yeah. By the way, are you guys, have you guys talked about the frozen penis yet? I, no, I, I haven't. Let's do that next. Okay. Let's do it now. I'm okay, glad you brought I'm it up. so interested. Okay. Yeah. So what Ravi's talking about, a skier from Finland ha said he suffered from an unbearable pain after his penis froze during a race at the Winter Olympics in Beijing. 24-year-old uh, Remy Lindholm told media after the, the men's 50-kilometer mass start cross-country skiing race, from start to finish, the race reportedly lasted nearly an hour and 16 minutes. Skiers braved... Uh, one degree weather, 40 mile an hour winds. It felt like negative 26. And Lindholm says it was one of the worst competitions he's ever been in. After the race, uh, the athlete's final competition at his first Olympics, Lindholm used a heating pad to thaw out his penis. And he said that once his penis started like coming to, it was the most pain he's ever felt in his life. Oh my. Mm, I could see that. Yeah. Um, 
Is that is, is they, he's a cross country skier? Yeah. Uh, I like that one where they carry the pellet gun yeah. while they ski. Well, right. One. Yeah. 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 Oh. But it also that seems is, yeah. like if running with scissors is dangerous. Yeah. Skiing with a, skiing with a gun over your shoulder, a loaded gun feels like you're yeah. asking for yeah. trouble. You certainly, I'm surprised like the guy, by, by the way, if I were in that event, I, I would just shoot whoever was in front of me. And I'd just go, hey man, sorry, hit a speed bump. It's the not fucking the thing went off. Games. Well, I, I'm competitive. Here's you know what, what I, mean? I don't understand. You can be How is the penis? That's the first thing that gets frozen. Like, wouldn't fingers or toes be frozen first? I'm glad you asked. I I did. Yeah. Can I explain something to you? Just so you're not, you're not female explaining to us. Yeah. Like we, our situation down there is actually quite warm. And it goes up. Mm -hmm. Doesn't it retract? No, your nutsack does. Oh, okay. Yeah. Your penis. (laughs) Oh, there's a bit, there's a bit of, there's a bit of that. Yeah. It's the, it's a bit of, Shrinkage. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah. It gets By little, Brian's it gets, it, There's some shrinkage. There's some shrinkage. Um, but but there's it's it's literally next to a, a pretty warm heater. I mean, I not to get too graphic, but I've stuck yeah. my hands down there sometimes to warm my hands. Mm-hmm. I get so, it. I'm trying to understand how the how does your dick get frozen before anything else? Like my nose. Look at my nose. My nose would go first. Okay, <laughs> it's in its own climate. Okay, mm-hmm. <laughs> and I think probably toes. I notice my toes get cold quickly. Yeah, I think it's about protection. I think the toes are pretty well protected in the boot, and I feel like these guys are wearing these like Lycron onesie. That was my point. This a thousand times this, my, the, my fingers go like you're walking. Right. The so yeah, the the extremities are in motion, which I imagine would help when you're dealing with negative twenty six. But what's the area covering the genitals is like. Paper thin. I mean, there, it's like a one. It's like a singlet. I also feel like it means you have a small ho- cock. Wouldn't it mean you have a big one? More to. More um, to I would it could be I, going I, further away. It could be a big one. I would say if I, you know, if you took a one pound pot roast or a five pound pot roast and put it in the freezer, which would freeze? The first? one pound. Well, oh. yeah, that's what I'm, saying. <laughs> yeah. I'm thinking of how far the distance is from the heating, from the heating. I'm really putting a lot of emphasis you on are. the warm balls. You sure yeah. are. Maybe he's you just, sure are. maybe he's looking for some <laughs> cock sympathy. Uh, like, you know what? Oh, there you go. I'll heal your dick. You know what I mean? Like some, maybe he's looking to get some oh, chicks interested. I'll warm it you up. Know? I'll bring it back I'll fix to life. It. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because I feel Do like, he, yeah. Is he Okay. He is. And that's when he said he, he, when he put the heating pack on it, when it like thawed out, it was excruciatingly painful. So he was better off with a uh-huh. frozen penis. I'm no scientist, but uh. when it thaws out, doesn't it just melt away to nothing like water? Mm. You are no scientist. We should ask, this um, guy. We should ask Drew because I don't think anyone here knows the answer. No, to that we one. don't. I don't. Never had a frozen penis. It's a weird thing to talk about. It is. That's what I was going to say. Athletes seem, you know, pretty macho and a lot of bravado. And he's like wanting to make sure everybody knows his penis froze off. Mm. <laughs> well, <laughs> look, well, well I, if there's one, I, I think that's a that's a specific kind of advocacy that is needed. Yeah. Because I didn't know I could freeze my dick before. I've right. heard people say I'm freezing my balls off, but I didn't know. <laughs> like, I'm actually concerned. Like, I, 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 I'm glad that I heard about this. Yeah. Hey, I could write that in as like a B story of uh, AIDS Butler. Where like I, I think, yeah, I think this show's writing itself. You have to go to Montana for a few days. The car runs out of gas Ooh. and it hit a snowbank. The elderly couple, like you're calling them going, you got to call the police or call oh, the patrol. They're like, right away. Right away. Uh-huh. Right after we're done watching Golden Girls. <laughs> hang up because yeah. now. Yeah, hold on. I got to do this podcast. Who's Adam Carolla? No uh, idea. It's that critical point where, oh, the woman of the elderly couple starting to like you. Yeah. And the man is like, let him yeah. die in the snowbank. We'll get that money. Yeah. I'll get him a blanket. Don't get him Don't a blanket. Don't get him a blanket. God, if only this was a few years ago, this would be great for like Wait. Rue McClanahan and Jack Lemon. Yeah. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. a feature. Wait, mm-hmm. so then do they sleep together and he gives her AIDS and then she takes out a life insurance policy? Robbie, Does it keep I, going? I, I think you're getting kind of caught up in this everyone's getting AIDS. Yeah, that's sweeps week. That's really well, I, well, I'm sorry, it's in the fucking title, Adam. I'm sorry. <laughs> right. All right. I listen. I know. Oh, my bad. No, no, you're right. 
Con you know Air is about to uh, do this together. No, no, look, don't no. turn on me. I, I'm, I'm saying. I mean, ooh, no, Ravi could be onto something because for the for the Valentine's Day auction, uh, AIDS Butler auctions himself to some very amorous elderly women, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. the couple's trying to figure out where do we tell them. Or oh, oh, right, yeah. right. He wants to open a kissing booth, right, to raise money. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, I mean, again, it writes itself, but there is the moral yeah. conundrum of you running out of gas in Montana and calling them with what's yeah. left on the last bit of battery on your phone. You're like, send help. And the, yeah. now it's a decision yeah. has yeah. to be made, right? Playing yeah. God. That's a powerful, that'll be a very special yeah. AIDS Butler That's two episode. Hours. Yeah, two hours. <laughs> <laughs> A very special AIDS Butler episode. Well, let's talk about something else that's very special. Arnold Schwarzenegger Mm -hmm. has teamed up with YouTube star and boxer Logan Paul to present the Slap Fighting Championship. And if you don't know what that is, I'm going to give you a taste. It's frighteningly intense. Oh, my God. God, it, yes. well, I'll show you. March fifth in Columbus, Ohio, the event will be live streamed for free on Logan's YouTube and Facebook channels and on FanMeo.com. This is not to be missed. I'm um, here's a clip of the promo, and feel free to call your own out because I let it pretty much play. Yeah, it's, it's, it's cool. oh my goodness, what a slap! A hit from one of these guys is like a baseball bat to the face. They call him Dumpling. The slap Watch what he does with the watermelon. He's literally a farmer. <laughs> oh! Zalich is the three-time champion. He has uh, never lost. No stress has one of the most powerful slaps I've ever seen. Oh, that's fucking stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Girls, too. All right. They need to they need to have a thing you know that's part of the ritual where they th- when they start the slap they need to all yell I said good day and boom you know and then I would watch gentlemanly they all need their they all their need phrase. their own catchphrase yeah. that I <laughs> <laughs> you have offended my honor and then boom like I uh, pistols at noon and then they <laughs> yeah Mm-hmm. Why did they say he's literally a farmer? They emphasized literally. That's weird. Is, is it a metaphor? <laughs> is it a metaphor to be a farmer in any way? Well, you know, like they always go, that guy slaps as hard as a farmer. He's from Chicago, but he, <laughs> I, I, you're right. They shouldn't have used the word That's literally. Weird. I haven't heard that one. In there. Yeah, yeah I, but I just one. made that one up, but I mean, I'm going to yeah, put okay. it in way, script. If one of those dudes hit me, oh like, my God. that could break my neck. I mean, mm. it could break my yeah. jaw. I, I'd be, I'd be. You would you would not fare well. No, I mean, that is, it's but, not just like slapping. If they had a titty slapping competition. Oh, fuck you yeah. guys. <laughs> But that's ten time world like champion. <laughs> and we've only been doing it eight years. I I, I don't know at all. The trailer was not impressive. It's not people who are good at slapping. It's giant fat people slapping. Yes. That's why slapping hurts. Yeah. Yes. That's if possible. I could out of someone, that would be impressive. Yeah. I see where you're coming from. I don't know. You know? Like and, and I don't know if you know, watching women, you know, they have a, the women's yeah. category. I don't know if I'd find it sort of appalling or I'd get a boner. It could, could be a little out. each, you know? Yeah. One way to find out. I'll thaw that dick out. Let's get, let's, let's get into your porn, or, porn <laughs> ups, Adam. Um, speaking of that, wasn't planning on bringing this up, but because Brian knows, yeah. because we've been standing by each other all weekend, I, you might, uh, you might have to say goodbye to these at some point in the near future. There's, Titties? Yeah. Really? Yeah. This is I'm like literally constantly on these sites mm. for a reduction. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, tell me, you know. Wait. We were blocked for a week. Just let me. Uh, <laughs> you know what? Do and they'll it, still be big, but for a regular person. Do big. what you want, but uh, Thank just you. give me the before and after stuff, because I know they, they do. They Some do the them, before. Brian knows. I take my safe search off. I have a whole collection of women's afters that are amazing. They're, pretty spectacular. They're still pretty big. I kind of like the befores oh. myself. That will thaw yeah. out my cock. <laughs> <laughs> it's a cock thawing party over here. I have a lot of befores on here. Mm-hmm. That, like, that's a before and that's an after. Yeah, that's like, good. Like, they're great. Yeah. They look right. great. 
So we'll see. Okay, I'll keep. What do you guys look? Wait, what's are people looking at breasts over there? What's yeah. happening? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, naked boobies. Mm-hmm. Okay, whose boobs? Your boobs? No, this like chick. I find lots of boobs I like, and then I screenshot them. Did that sound oh, perverted? What a nice friend you are, and yeah. then you show them to them. Yeah, yeah. They're, you uh, can't see their faces. It, it's like yeah, sure, but that's. That's just nice of you to bring breasts to work, I think. Yeah. Someone well, you got to bring it. <laughs> you got to bring it in when you're talking about the surgery. Like, remember, everyone loved Jennifer right. Aniston's hair, season two That's of Friends, right. you know, and the you Rachel. go into the yes. salon and you go, well, this is what you I get want. The Rachel. Right. That's what I'm That's doing. A, mm-hmm. I'll let you know. Okay. I, would right. have, I would have never seen Corolla referencing season two of Friends. That's <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> So much range. A lot of range. I think Ravi can agree because he's basically doing it now. And Adam, I think you're going to love this. Doctors in Canada are prescribing, like literally with a prescription pad, prescribing time in nature for their patients. So there's this new program called PARCS, P-A-R-X, like RX for prescription, which touts the mental and physical health benefits of being outside. And so doctors in British Columbia, Ontario, Saskatchewan, Manitoba, prescribe their patients passes for national parks and then they get national park passes because they think it's medicinal speaking of my crystal brain if you go back and listen to love line from Mm -hmm. 1996 there's people coming in and they want to get on paxil and virgidil and all the doctor and they're saying they're hyperkinetic or Mm -hmm. whatever it is put some classical music in your earbuds and go for a hike just go outside and start hiking and do it for a week and and drew would always be like oh no but people need you know the medication whatever and i go fine try this yeah. try going outside listening to classical music and just hiking just go out in the nature and just hike around give it a week see if that doesn't change the flora and the fauna and if it doesn't then go get your medication but go try this. Go outside. Go yeah. move around. I mean, that's obviously we could have used COVID as a as a great teachable window no. in, into this. The caution tape. We just went right. Instead, we closed the beaches. So we we did with COVID and beaches what those idiots did with the food pyramid mm-hmm. from the seventies. Oh. We got it all wrong. Grains, grains, and nothing but grains. And then we're always like, well, but the government agency said, <laughs> you know, like I mean, not enough history here. Yeah. Yeah, remember, I think it was Michelle Obama when they p- changed it to the plate instead of the triangle, because the triangle, they realized, was completely wrong. Um, have, okay, so Lizzo, let's talk about bodies. Lizzo has a new dance competition geared toward plus-size dancers. It's called Lizzo's Watch Out for the Big Girls. And Amazon Prime will premiere it on March 25th. The show will pit 10 contestants vying for a spot How on How do they the spell prime. girls? <laughs> G with like four R's L S. Oh, okay. That's so I was saying it right. Uh, so they're they're gonna get a spot on her upcoming tour. So it's you get a real prize. Um, Lizzo says the confident badass women will move into the big girl's house to see if they have what it takes to hang with the queen. And here's a quick promo. What's up, y'all? It's Lizzo. I'm looking for dancers to join me on my tour. Girls that look like me don't get representation. Time to pull up my sleeves and find them myself. (laughs) (laughs) We thick and we pretty and we know what we about. It's the battle of the big girls. You know, it's funny. We had uh, Natasha Henstridge in here, Mm -hmm. who is very hot. Yes. Love the girl. Uh, none of the hot chicks have to explain that everyone thinks they're hot and they're proud and they know what they're about. Like, uh, I get a little suspicious when the fat chicks keep talking about how big and beautiful they are. So eh, maybe, maybe protesting a little too much here. So number one, we'll decide who's hot. You don't get to decide if you're hot. I know I'm hot, but that's because America voted mm. like that park ranger <laughs> over there. But I will, I will say this. Fat chicks... I think can dance better than skinny chicks. And I don't feel it's that way for gymnastics or beach volleyball, but they can dance better because there's more mass and they can get that mass moving in different directions with the bony bitches. I mean, they're good. It's cute. But I, I, I do think fat guy, fat chicks can move. I don't think, I don't know that fat dudes can, although look no further than a rerun from what's happening. (laughs) Yes, the current reference. That's right. So it's right. been a while. Yeah. But yeah, these I I love this. I mean, they're going on tour with her. She she hires what she's all about. You know, she representation. Fantastic. I, I'm excited about this show. 
I will watch. I, I Lizzo in um, her constant preaching about body, 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 body. I it's just it, it feels like crazy overcompensation to me. Well, it's she's become always part of, talking about it. You're right, but it's kind of her brand. Mm-hmm. Like that's part of her corporation. And she plays the flute real well, right? Amazingly well. We yeah. rewind. Did you say you will watch, Adam? I just don't understand. You you are unpredictable, my friend. I just You're going to watch this show? No, nah, I just don't want the listeners thinking I'm racist. <laughs> There's white dudes. <laughs> so no way am I going to fucking watch I this. I think with that, I, I would never watch any show that no, has I'll, shot of like, people I'll, trying to make a dance team. It's just not for me. I'll be watching Ted Nugent's Bow Hunting America <laughs> like two channels over the entire time. I just want people to think I'm a little more open-minded and progressive. You know, yeah. I didn't flee Hollywood. I got to negotiate. What are your, what are your favorite? Here. Can you tell me your like top two or three shows you're watching right now? They have to be about cars. I, I watch uh, car related shows and uh, UFC related shows. And uh, then I'll I'll take a deep dive into the love boat. Just so me and Drew have mm-hmm. something to talk about. And, uh, oh, I watch TMZ. That's how I get caught up on what Lizzo is up to. He was really into Sex in the City. Well, definitely watch Sex in the City. And, of course, the aforementioned Friends. That's how I know the haircut right. reference. All right, shall we bring it home, Gina Grad? Let's do that. I'm Gina Grad, and that's the news. Watch out for the big girls. <laughs> Gina, Gina Grad. That was the news with Gina Grad. Well, last there's Geico. Like to save a little money on insurance? Of course you would. That's why you go with Geico. Comes with uh, great rates for everyone at uh, Geico. So you can save uh, even more and get even more discounts when you bundle your coverage. And it's easy to do as well. Just go to Geico.com. Use their mobile app for 24-hour roadside assistance and switch to Geico. It is a no-brainer. So switch today at Geico.com. All right, I'm going to be in Waukegan, Illinois, at the Genesee Theater, March 10th, doing stand-up. And then Kansas City, everybody, at the uh, Comedy Club of Kansas City. I'll be in March 11th and 12th. We'll do some live pods there and some stand-up there. You can go to amcurl.com for all the live shows. Joe Buscaino, you can find at uh, his website, joebuscaino.com. Ravi, you can find him in a Ford Fusion. <laughs> Piling down the highways and the byways. Titanium. Titanium. Bringing mirth. Bringing mirth to America. Butters, the name of the film, is available in select theaters and on video on demand tomorrow as you hear this. Thanks, Ravi. Always fun talking to you, my brother. He just muted himself, I think. (laughs) You good, Rob? All right. So, until next time, Adam Kroll for Ravi Patel and Joe Buscaino and Gina Grant and Paul Ryan say it. Mahalo. It's like when my wife says, Joe, we should consider leaving L.A. Bullshit. We're not leaving. Okay, our parents came here with nothing. This city has given us so many opportunities. It's gone to shit. And I'm tired of it. And I can only have done so much as a one of 15 members. And why should we leave? 